welcome to our 133rd episode of Gorilla Radio. I'm Joe Caprino, alongside Mr. Mike Reiser, the rankings extraordinaire. A uh, little slower day these days, but still a lot going on in the wrestling world. How's uh, how, how's the first full week away from wrestling? Uh, still busy, like uh, just a little bit less busy, but... Um... You know, still doing stuff with the girls, obviously. Um, just find different things to fill in your day with than you normally would. But, you know, yeah, you got still watch your results. You got, yeah. you know, the 1A, 2A, and freshman, sophomore this weekend. We got ISWA coming up, Folk Style State. So, Big Tens, NCAAs. So, kind of, you know, wrestling for a couple more weeks. But uh, more just, you know, relaxing, watching results. Kind of see matchups and see where those guys fit. You know, obviously, like a uh, freshman, sophomore state and 1A and 2A state are um, not leveled events. I mean, there's qualifiers for the freshman, sophomore. and But to see kind of where those guys meet up and, you know, some of the guys that we knew were tough, they were coming out of different areas. Hitting some of the state qualifiers and stuff was pretty interesting. A lot of good stuff there. Yeah, the, the, start off with like a little bit of that. The 1A, 2A state was kind of – it was kind of under the radar. I know someone posted about it a couple months ago or like earlier in January. And I'm like, what is this? Couldn't see any of the entries, but ended up pretty solid, uh, pretty solid event. Um, Rochester brought yeah. a lot of their good kids. Um, Centerville, real good 1A school. I brought a lot of guys. Manchester, Cascade had some good kids there. Um, just pretty solid event overall. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by some, you know, you've seen some of the, the finals were pretty good matches. Um, you know, uh, Logan Bickle at 113 over a state qualifier. Wyatt Davis, Peter Nguyen was third. Um, Bryson Hale, who's pretty tough from, or pretty solid from Centerville, was fourth. I mean, it's pretty good weights. Um, pretty impressive. Just, you know, a lot of good matches, especially towards the uh, semis and finals there. Yeah, uh, I know we talked about it a little bit on the last show. I wish uh, it was a different weekend. Just so it doesn't conflict with um, the event, and maybe in the future it'll be a different weekend. So you let some of those guys kind of wrestle two events, both of those. But um, then you start kind of falling into some of the ISWA stuff, and, and it's tough. It's tough to find the right weekend to get that stuff in. Yeah, there's only uh, but two weeks between. But, there's only two weeks between state and uh, ISWA state, so you're, you're you're cutting it close with, you know, two weeks, and then you have your. One of those weeks, obviously, is going to be our you know, this freshman sophomore that's grown to be a monster yeah. in itself. Oh yeah, and then you have you know like the day after state, you're going to have um, indie nationals and you know all that stuff. So guys are still got opportunities to wrestle, but um, you just wish I was on a different day to see how some of those you know younger guys compete at the freshman sophomore state level. I know that's a big event, but that's really cool. Uh, hopefully, they get um you know a little bit more promotion of it and. But you're right. Like I think a lot of teams went there, but I think it, you know, there's some teams that went there. I didn't see a lot of. Uh, I mean, just kind of glancing over, I see a lot of Belmont in there or any of those guys. So, yeah. Hopefully, going forward, it could be a, a pretty big event for those guys. Yeah, it definitely could add some. Uh, you know, you throwing in a Belmont or Garrett, uh, Prairie Heights. I know they had a handful of guys at um, at freshman sophomore state too. So, uh, so that yeah. was. I mean, so, I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, I'd say they'd probably more, more likely send their guys to, you know, most of those teams are m more likely to send their guys to freshman, sophomore. But if, if this is moved to next weekend, it, you know, you're probably going to snag some of those kids. Yeah, and I think that, that gives those guys an opportunity to uh, showcase because I, I think there is like a discrepancy in the small school, big school uh, medalists. And this kind of gives an opportunity for those guys to kind of show, you know, where they're at and all that. I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, definitely, and hopefully it keeps it continues to grow and gets uh you know has has a lot of track. It seems like it has some pretty good traction. Where they have three hundred and fifteen kids, which that's a pretty good sized tournament for one for just a high school division. So yeah, it continues to grow and you know something you know something more to look forward to in the off season to 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 uh, use for rankings purposes <laughs> and stuff. Well, I, I think yeah, I think and also you know it's giving those guys the recognition. That they deserve. I think that's a huge part of it. Just, uh, you know, sometimes it's easy to get lost in the shuffle. I mean, you see someone like Sarah or, or Heather Crawl won it there, um, which is really impressive. I know, obviously, we know how tough she is qualifying for a state, but to see her, you know, and she got 12 
zero major in the finals. You already talked about Bickle, uh, Jesus uh, Morales over Ethan Holloway. Ethan Holloway is real tough. Liam Sebercrest is in there also. Uh, I seen Dominic McFeely was six, so he was a state qualifier. Um, just across the board, just you know, real, Ethan Thompson was in the rankings for a little bit, and you see some you know some seniors, Dylan Stroud. So I think it's just a cool event for those guys and uh, and ladies. But you know, you want to see it keep growing and get better. But it's the first year. I'm sure it will. You know, the first year is always the toughest one. Yep, yep. And, the, you know, and you get a – I mean, obviously they had 315 teams there, and it's going to continue to grow. So, obviously, having that kind of event, you're, they were able to probably at least break even money-wise and go from there. No one's been commenting yet. And I know we have some – Congratulations to those guys. Yes, so um, – People on here, no one's commenting. Our lively tweeters are not there. Or our, our people are not on there. I just want to make sure it was working. Um, so uh, freshman, sophomore state, we can go over a little bit some of the results there. Uh, real good, you know, another really big event. I think what they have, uh, they had over 500, 550 wrestlers. So uh, so pretty good event. And, you know, 73 girls, which is pretty good. Some girls, you know, some real good uh, girls brackets. There we go. Hey, they're they're here. <laughs> um, so what what kind of anyone stick out to you in the results? I guess. Yeah, I always feel like that's a you know that event, and you can go back uh, since they've started that event, and kind of it paces like in four years, three or four years. Like there's gonna be a lot of guys you see the state finals. Uh, Gavin Bragg, real good tournament, won it at 106. Beat uh, Ty Henderson, who's in the rankings. Caleb Salazar was in the rankings. Leonard Ash, Mason Jones had been in the rankings. So those are all really tough guys, you know, to get that win. Uh, Frazier over uh, Ash. <clears throat> Seth Syra, like we, we, or Syra, we, we talk about how tough he is. Um, he just came out of that really tough Evansville semi state at 120. Um, be Ty Lesnar. He had two state qualifiers and uh, or three state qualifiers because Dylan Bennett was eighth. Bond and Rivera were third and fourth. Uh, Ty Lesnar, uh, real good season, kind of. Uh, did he was he a semi state guy? I don't yeah, remember. Yeah, he was a semi state guy. I think he had, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say he wrestled um, Brady in the ticket round. So kind of a tough draw. That's a that was a good match, three two. <clears throat> or no, he no, lost he just... to a uh, Hagwood from Prairie Heights, but then I think he would have had had Brady in this ticket round. Let me see. Tough City's had a really good showing at freshman sophomore the last couple of years. Um, we talk about that. We talk about that a lot. Uh, this is where you go and you look to see where these guys are going to be at in the future, and <clears throat> kind of give you an idea where some of these backups are. You see a lot of you know Belmont guys in there. Uh, Michael Major, real tough freshman from Carmel State qualifier. Silas Foster, um, Purdue Polytechnical is not uh, in the IHSA tournament yet, but uh, and I, I don't know when they will be. So as I say, yeah, like they'll be in an extra. I have no clue, but um, was third there. Yeah, that, that uh, Wesley passed. Smith over Silas Stilts. Uh, Branson Weaver was third. That whole Purdue Polytech thing is very interesting. I don't know when they're going to be. Uh, I think they're still a couple, a year or two away from being able to wrestle in the state series. So um, that's huh. kind of. And they have some. They're heavyweight. I don't know if he was a senior this year or a junior, but he was pretty good. He had some good wins. Foster's pretty tough. Obviously, a third place finish there. So. 145 was really good at uh, freshman sophomore Evan Roudenbush, Colton Romulus, uh, Lars Hughes, Aiden White, the backup at Crown Point, Jackson Nyberg, who's had some really good wins, Gage Gully, Adrian Pellet, who was a, a ticket runner for Mel uh, Merrillville, and uh, Devin Todd of Bloomington South. That's a really good bracket. Uh, placers, Holly Field, the Penn, uh, the champ at 52. I've seen Penn had some good at good action on the board there. Yes, yes, they did. There's uh, they, they're already, I mean. They look like I mean they have a young team. They've had a young team for a couple of years, so they're going to be pretty. They return a lot of guys this year, so they might. Uh, they're going to be pretty solid coming out of that regional. Uh, Zach Huckabee uh, was kind of a surprise state qualifier at the end for Perry Meridian. Uh, won it, beat Noah Terry at Tell City. I said Tell City's had a really good. Uh, they've had a really good run at the freshman sophomore Kale Hickok over Kenneth Bisping of Lowell. Cameron Chris down a weight. Levi Abbott's in that weight also. Carol K. Will Jeffries. So 
just you know, Craig Gear 170 was one I was looking at um, when I was looking at the guys that, that were in the bracket. Clay Gary and O'Greenfield Central, who had been in, in other rankings. Noah Klauser, who's been ranked. David uh, Ob- Abode of Decatur Central. I know he was like, I want to believe he was a pretty high seat at Marion County. Um, Lace Detweiler, Gaoshin, I, I wasn't sure. Crew Farrell, I know, real tough. Caden Brewer, uh, Braxton Russell. So a lot of talent at that weight. Just overall, just a really, a really good tournament. Uh, Hastings over Blair at 195. Um, Jonathan Neese, Laville, I thought he looked really good at the semi-state. Um, he was real close to getting a fall in the ticket round. Uh, Aramis McNutt of Highland had some good wins. Devin Kendricks, a state qualifier. Cole uh, Chacon of McCutcheon. And heavyweight, heavyweight's always one you'll see, uh, which is an interesting one, too, because it's we talk about depth. Um, oh, yes. Tyler Shad of Center Grove wins freshman, sophomore. They have a really good young heavyweight. They have yeah. a, a young 220. I mean, I don't know. I know um, uh, Decker was a, a heavyweight last year. I don't know if he's trying to lean out to go to 95 and <laughs> these guys go to 220. <laughs> but start going the uh, the opposite way. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how big. Let's see how big is uh, his shot, I guess. We can kind of tell how big he is. He was 262. I don't think he's leaning out. My... No, he's not leaning out. How big was uh, How big was um Johnson? I don't think Johnson wasn't in the tournament, was he? But Johnson's a big no, kid. No. Yeah, he's yeah. He's pretty solid. He's pretty big. So he, you know, I mean, that's a he's first a world player. problems for them. I don't even know what year uh, shot is. Is he a freshman? He had a nice win over Anthony Poppy from Plymouth, who who's had some good wins this year too. Yeah. Yeah, he had some good wins and I, man, yeah. How's Paris Green? Uh, only a sophomore. I feel like he's been on that rankings list for a long time too. Yeah, she, they don't have shots. Uh, grade at the see he right. Oh, shot was there. I don't know. He was a, he's a freshman, so so he might have a year. I mean, he said he said shots a sophomore. Oh, is, is Nate Johnson big too? Klaus is in here. Yeah. Um, okay, yes, that's 2020. I was reading it wrong, but, yes. But that's tough, man. Like, there's not a way for those guys to go up, you know? Yeah. Like, you're just going to kind of be in the mix, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's no way, no no place for him to to go. Ne- go. I mean, you yeah. lose 40 pounds, and then you got Russell RD3. So, uh, yeah, that's that'll be interesting to see how that yeah. plays out. And obviously, he's going to be pushing Johnson. I mean, he's good enough to push him. So, that's yeah. one of those things that. You gotta. He, Johnson can't take any days off, or you know, some he's gonna get passed pretty quickly. Uh, and they had another good heavyweight. I think this past year, uh, their heavyweight from last year, he had some really good wins. Uh, I don't remember. I thought he was younger, also, but I didn't see him Owen Green in the rankings this year. But uh, or in the lineup, obviously, yeah, Johnson and those guys. But you know, just talk about the depth of you know Center Grove. I know we've talked about it all year, but I mean, if, if you can find a way to get those guys all in the lineup. You know, it kind of helps alleviate the loss of uh, Senior Buchanan. And you have, you know, Klauser has obviously put on – they obviously lift weights over there. Klauser went from 32 <laughs> to, to yes. 70. Like, it was a fit. Like, it wasn't like he was a, a chubby kid. He was pretty fit there. Yeah. They got McConnell in that same area. So, I'm sure those guys are going to continue to to lift and fill out that weight class. And you got, you know, you know Julian Weems. So, you're going to have, like, just guys up top. And you're going to have, you know, Drew Mills in there. So, those guys are just going to be re- loaded from – 52 through heavyweight, it's going to be tough to find a spot in that, that lineup. Yeah, Probably definitely. even more than that because you talk about Stelts is in there, as a freshman sophomore runner-up as a 38. Uh, Crazio is a sophomore, 32, medalist. Mm-hmm. They have like four or five 120s and 126s that can mix it up. So tough room to break through in. It looks like they t- kept team scores. I'm just kind of looking at the team scores. I know they include the girls in there. So um, more in central – had probably the best tournament and doesn't have their placings on there. Darn it. They had one, two, three placers. Andre Marriott. Center Grove only had three wrestlers, but they had two runner ups and a first. So that's that's uh, pretty good. Yeah, and I still Merritt too at fifty two, so he'll probably be a sixty. I'm sure Weems a bump up. It's just, you know, you have so much depth in that that room. And like you said, like those guys are gonna be pushing each other. Like that's huge. Yeah. Like yeah. 
you don't you don't necessarily have to wrestle ten thousand matches this summer, which doesn't always hurt. But you're gonna be wrestling tough matches in your room every day. Yeah. yeah. Every time you go to practice, every you know every lift, you're gonna be you know have someone pushing you. So that's I mean that's always a good. Uh, I mean that's a good problem to have for them, and that's gonna continue to make them you know they're gonna be pushing Crown Point and Brownsburg. Um, they're not going anywhere anytime soon, so it's gonna be kind of fun to watch. You know, as it comes on, as it keeps going. So, um, we actually have a, an agenda a little bit today, so that's pretty in interesting. Uh, we will we'll see. I'm gonna stick to it. <laughs> that when, when we get to the grade rankings, that'll be that'll be the the tough part. Uh, I guess the next part of the Pittsburgh lineup is finalized. At least, hopefully, no one backs out or no one gets injured like last time. So, uh, kind of go over what we have there. Pretty solid lineup. Uh, spring break kind of kicked our butt with a couple guys. I was hoping that would make it, but uh, I still the, the people that are coming in uh, are going to be pretty good um, from the get go. Uh, One twenty. Go ahead. Quint Quint has got here, man. We we talked about one A two A state first, man. We let off with the best the best thing to talk about. Come on, Quinn. Join us late. I'm I'm disappointed. And we were talking about Logan Bickle too, man. Yeah. Rewind, rewind. <laughs> did they keep team? I mean, before we go on, did they keep team score at, at Rochester? Oh, Rochester by about fifty. Yeah, I, yeah, they had the team score there. A little bit under. I mean, sometimes when they have, I mean, they had seventeen. Centerville had, you know, so they had a little bit more than, and they doubled up in some weight classes. So I'm sure that's. Uh, did they only yeah. Have, Oh, they only scored one guy per weight, looks like. So that's good. They had a couple, yeah, they had non scoring guys. Okay. He's their one nine scoring guy. They placed two at 95. That's pretty impressive. So, um, so our, our Pittsburgh team, um, Braxton Vest from Westfield at 120, Mateo Vargo at. 126, Elijah Anthony, 132, Matthew Kuntz at 138, Hayden Watson at 145, Tyler Jones at 152, Jay Conway at 160, Brody Porter at 170, 182 is Landon Buchanan, 195, Connor Barkett, 220, Juan Grange, and then 285, Mihail Petanov, Big Mike. So pretty solid team. Um, Lots of state medals. I think the overall record is over over fifteen hundred wins by all those guys combined, which is crazy to think. And then like about an eighty eight percent winning percentage for all of those guys. So pretty successful guys overall. It's kind of interesting getting their their records. And Vargo only had ten losses. Uh, Coons only had twelve losses. Coons and Watson only had twelve losses on their career. Um, Jay Conway only had seven. Porter only had 10. Um, Big Mike was not as, as successful to start out, obviously, when he, he was a heavyweight since he, he, you know, from when he started, but he uh, but he still, you know, got over 100 wins in his career, which is pretty impressive when you just start wrestling as a freshman. So, any uh, comments on the uh, Pittsburgh team? Yeah, uh, I, I think um, you kind of touched on it a little bit before. Uh, Spring break did kind of, you know, take some of the guys out. Like some of the guys had are playing vacations. You can't, you can't knock anybody for that. Like obviously, we didn't consult with them before on their vacationing. Yes. But um, you know, so you're gonna have some guys mixing in some different weights, and some guys declined. So you try to fill the, the roster the best you can, you know. Yeah. And luckily, you know, some of those guys want to step in and they'll, they'll cut away. Like uh, Matthew Koontz, just you know, obviously number one's going to. Uh, you know, he's going to be on the Team USA team at 138. And then we just, you know, some declined, some didn't return messages. And it's just un the unfortunate part of it. And you try to fill it in the best that you can uh, do it. Yeah, definitely. And Koontz is probably one of the better ones that was, you know, on that. You know, I kind of knew like Watson and Koontz looking at them. I'm like, uh, it'd be nice if one of them would have been at 138 because obviously Jesse's on the Team USA team. And as much as I'm sure him and and uh, Zeke would love to double up, but at the same time, it gives another opportunity. Another, you know, guys like Elijah, Anthony, and Coons both get to go experience the event, which is pretty cool. And 
yeah. definitely doesn't hurt to have more people experience it. So, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of undecided guys in this, uh, in this, uh, group, um, which is very interesting, uh, with as much success as these guys have had, uh, Vest, Vargo, uh, Kuntz, Tyler Jones, Porter, Buchanan, Barkett, Grange, and Big Mike all have not decided on a college. Yeah. So, um, if you're, if you're a college coach, there's some pretty good guys sitting out there that, uh, you know, can kind of fill in your lineup and make an impact pretty quickly. Yeah, I think that's – and that's the other part of it too is going to be those guys going to be able to showcase at a big event where, you know, maybe you'll have some college coaches there. I'm sure, you know, a guy like Tom Ryan will probably be there. He has a couple of recruits going. Um, maybe a Mizzou's coach will be there. Yeah. And not only the D1, but you kind of trickle down from there, and it's an opportunity for those guys to get seen, you know. Yep. It's going to be, you know, Which is crazy. Yeah. Because those guys have wrestled some really good events too. Yeah, I mean, there's you a know? lot of guys that are placed – I mean, have done – pretty well vests you know two-time medalist vargo was a you know two-time finalist in in south carolina third and fifth uh he has the credentials he did he's done well at like uh i want to say the grappler and things like that anthony's been to state four times i know he had a real good ipo i uh, beat uh frazier uh Kuntz yep. has three medals tyler jones has three medals um porter's been to state three times runner up um you know Buchanan has two state medals. Ooh, what happened to my thing? Oh, there it is. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, Grange has, uh, you know, runner up. Mike, Big Mike has two state medals at a weight class that's not, I know he, I'm pretty positive he doesn't play football. So, you know, that'd be a good pickup for, you know, in Indianapolis, a Manchester, you know, trying somewhere like that, that he can come in and make an impact pretty quickly. Yeah. I think uh, that's always interesting to see, but. Like I said, like, it's always cool to see, like, you know, Indiana taking a team to that event um, where I think in the past those have been viewed more as, like, you know, powerhouse states, and it just kind of shows how how our state's growing as a – growing the sport. Yep. So, yeah, so it's a real great event. You know, we'll be talking about this as we get closer. It's only a few weeks away. So I'm trying to figure out my weeks of – got stuff going on this weekend, ISWA State. You got Big Tens and all that, and then NCAs, then this, and then our spring break. So <laughs> pretty busy few right. weeks coming up. Um, yeah, so I think that's a it's pretty cool. Like I said, I, I, I'm sure my my old Indiana mat last year's blankets around here somewhere too. Yeah, that, I got one too, just because you know it was. I think you got an extra. Yeah, I saw it was, a couple extras sitting around the uh, in in the storage area. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. <laughs> They're a little dated now. They're out, what, yeah. six years old? <laughs> yeah, you know, Drew Hughes and Jake Clamola. So. Had you know, Strex on there. Um, let's see. Uh, Drew Hildebrand, he's on there. Uh, Kale McCormick. Let's see. I could probably pull it up somewhere, but um, anyway. So, uh, so with, you know, pretty good team. Excited for that. And, you know, we got our coaches, uh, Cooper Samuels, Tom Griffith, and Jeremiah Maggart. Um, so, uh, pretty good group of guys there that are the official coaches. They get to experience the whole, uh, the whole experience, which is pretty cool. Um, pretty cool thing that they're going to be, they'll be doing, you know, be able to be official coaches and stuff. Um, so yep. And Strek, yes, Strek, uh, D2 and D3, D, uh, NAIs are this weekend and then next weekend's D2 and D3s and Strek's. Mate, he's wrestling for what? Uh, Central Oklahoma in D two. Yep. Which you just told me that the other day. I'm like, what? <laughs> on the on the lowdown. Yeah. And doing really well. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's gonna. It's pretty good. Good to see him back on the mat. I know he is. I was surprised to see that he was wrestling again and hang out in Oklahoma and gonna do some damage in the D two and hopefully brings brings back a championship. So. Yeah. I know he was, uh, he did that, like, um, what was it? He did that, like, RTC, like, cup a couple years ago. He was in there. I think, uh, I thought he was going to go to, um, I thought he was going to go to Oklahoma State for a little bit. I know he was there. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was training at Oklahoma State for a while. Yeah. But <laughs> great for him, man. Great. That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, Senior Nationals is this weekend, too. No, probably. I don't know what that is. Senior the senior nationals and stuff is the same weekend as the uh, as the Pittsburgh event. 
Ah. Uh, that's what, because I know I was talking to the to uh, Shutley at at, at uh, Perry Meridian, and he said all their coaches are going to go. They'll be at in Virginia, so they have a ton of different. Okay, I think there's duels. There must be some duels this weekend. Yes. So, um, before we get to the rankings, I guess the next line item is Ipo. I have officially dotted the I's and crossed the T's on a new location for Ipo, and hopefully this will be the final location. Um, brand new facility. Well, the facility is technically not brand new, but it will be kind of new and renovated. Um, it's called the Auburn Sports Park. It's right off I-69. It used to be a big car auction place um, just north of kind of where we are in Fort Wayne. So um, not really – it's still about 10, 15 minutes from where I live, so it's no not really that further – much further away than uh, the high school Carroll is or even um, – or even the uh, – uh, the, the plex so um pretty cool place i'll put the link to it. it's brand gonna be brand new they're renovating these huge buildings uh i may i gotta look at the picture um so we'll be like the second event in the in the building second or third event let me see i can tell you how many basketball courts are in in this building is it gonna go back to uh one big session you're gonna kind of keep it the split session how it was um, I don't know yet. I, I kind of like the split session works pretty well. Um, we might change that up a little bit. Um, and kind of like how, uh, freshman, sophomore did like half the weights morning session, half the weights second session. And then if you make top 12 or top 16, wrestle the second day, we might do something like that. I don't know yet. Um, we'll figure that out. They'll have in the one building that will be, it's like a big L and there's one, two, three, four, five five basketball courts like this way and then there's one like this so there's six basketball courts so it's gonna be pretty big um so it's gonna be uh gonna be pretty cool i know uh i'm excited to you know see the progress and my only worry is it's, it should be done obviously for wrestling they just need restrooms and a flat surface and i think that'll be done by the time we have to get it and I know there's another event before us that's pretty big that they're working on having it for. So, um, so check it out. It's called the Auburn Sports Park. Um, Auburn Sports Group is kind of the group name. So, um, just excited to have it at a pretty cool facility. It's going to be they're kind of mirroring it a little bit off of uh, <laughs> the uh, kind of the Westfield place, the Grand, Grand Park, Park, which is. Uh, you know, pretty big sports facility. They're going to have baseball fields, football fields, indoor stuff, outdoor stuff. So it'll be a pretty cool place and kind of good to see that coming to DeKalb County and, and, uh, you know, North, Northeast Indiana. Is there still a lot of hotels and stuff over that way? Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that, that used to, be, that's where they had the big car auction that would, you know, like guys like Jay Leno would come there regularly and lots of celebrities and stuff, but the, that's where they had it, but it wouldn't only be used a couple of times a year. So now they're, they, they're going to make it so that this place is going to be used multiple times a year, you know, 30, 40, 50 weeks a year. So it's going to be good nice. for the local economy. And there's still a lot of hotels there. And even if you come up to Fort Wayne, you're about 10 minutes away from the uh, DuPont road exit where there's a bunch of hotels. So, um, so pretty easy to get to right off the highway. I mean, you can't miss it. Um, so lots of parking, lots of restrooms, uh, same day it's not too hot <laughs> you gonna run it the same day uh yep yeah same it'll be the i think it's the 10th and 11th this year uh let me see yeah 10th and 11th of september the week after uh it's always the weekend after labor day um so um yeah so it's gonna be pretty good we're gonna start working on some details and all that other stuff as we go on throughout the spring so look for that information to go out and Hopefully I can get in there and kind of take some pictures once they get rolling with uh, the construction. I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like and see the, you know, see it, you know, with all the basketball courts and all that stuff down there. Does that, uh, are you still going to cap it at a certain number now mm -hmm. that you're like at a different event? Yeah, we'll cap it for at least this year and then we'll see how it goes and see what we can do. Obviously, I, I mean, we capped it at 800 last year and still sold out. So, and it was a long day. So we're, we'll, Still looking at how we're going to run it, see if we might change things up a little bit. 
um, run a couple rounds on Saturday evening and then go home and we can, obviously we have the room to add some more mats. <laughs> so if, if you want to stay at the leech household, um, I'm sure it's a nice, uh, I'm sure he'll cook breakfast for you and everything. <laughs> What's the going rate right there, Jason, for your, for your place? <laughs> 325 a night, man. Come on. <laughs> Does that include breakfast? I, I might go stay there. <laughs> um, yeah, so it should be pretty neat. Um, yeah, we're going to kind of, I'm going to look at some of the options of how we're going to run it. See if we run it the same or change some things up a little bit. Um, we'll go from there once we get a little bit closer and see how the numbers are and everything. So excited to hopefully have a permanent location for a while. And now it's going to be all in one building. I mean, that's one of the things people liked about uh, um, the Plex was everything was in one built, you know, one room basically at Carol, we had it split up, which is yeah. hard to coach and keep track of. And I fully understand that. So, so we'll, we'll work on it and hopefully have a, another great event. So. I'm sure it, it, that's one of those ones we were talking about. Uh, the one A and two A state. I seen some people got on there, um, and just kind of continue on that. Where Centerville had a good day, and it looked like France had a monster day for Manchester. But we were talking about how that grew from their first event. Like their their that event will grow. Like I oppose grown from the first event huge because the first event wasn't like as big as it is now. Still a lot of good wrestlers there, but now it's you know a huge preseason thing that's going to really set the tone for the ranking. I mean, that's how we, and we're going to get into some great rankings, but a guy like Jake Hockaday gets a number one because he wins an IPO, you know, and we'll talk about some of the freshman guys that were competing at IPO that made an impact that'll be making an impact coming into next year. Yeah. I'm going to put the link to the uh, website here. Um, so some of the people, obviously Mr. Leach has been, has seen it. I just put that in the uh, in the chat so people can check it out. So, um, check out the check it out and uh, should be a pretty nice place to have a have a wrestling tournament. And I've I know I've been poking some other people and saying, hey, this might be a uh, good nice location for other wrestling events. And obviously, I'll be a nice uh, test. <laughs> obviously, if if you can run IPO there and you can run it well, and you know things are you know ran to a in a in a good manner and you know great facility that they can uh th it might open the door for other events there so excited for that so we will move on to raid rankings what do you want to start with whatever man <clears throat> let's whatever one start with let's first hide that i didn't make that bigger yet Um, we will start with freshmen. We'll do, we're going to do about the top 10 ish. For and coming freshmen are like already freshmen, current freshmen, class of 20, 25. Um, I kind of, these are not official numbers. Uh, these are just kind of sorting to kind of group them. Um, I'm thinking Hockaday is probably your number one returning uh, state yeah. champion. I, I would say, I would say so. I think Hockaday is, one, um, really good season. You know, we talked about we a couple losses. I know he lost to Rio, but he had, um, you know, some national ranking. So pretty good. Not bad. Um, so then our next best uh, ones were we have Jandris or Gunnar Henry. Um, I'd probably go Jandris too. Um, Jandris. I think uh, that was probably, you know, a really good match in the finals. It was right there. And then probably Henry three. Yeah. VZ four. VZ four. Um, these are, this is an easy one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think those top four were pretty easy. After that, it gets a little tougher. Um, maybe Reinhardt. I think Reinhardt, uh, you know, getting seventh at uh, 52. And he had a win over. He had a rope good win over. Uh, over uh, Delaney Roman. Roman. So, um, yeah, that, I mean that's pretty solid top five right there. Um, yeah, really solid. Especially when you consider two of them are 182 pounders that were in the semifinals wrestling against a junior and senior. <laughs> so, 
Oh I mean, yeah. I mean, Henry had a, a a win over the the state champ at one one fifty two or one eighty two, which is pretty impressive. So, um, next we have uh, Levi Johns and Eddie Goss were both eighth, and then Schaefer that was seventh at a pretty solid one hundred six pound weight class. Uh, I mean, and Chris is right. I think it's tough when you're in there because a lot of these guys are going to be smaller. Um. I'd probably go Schaefer. I think uh, he's probably ahead of those guys. But they, th- then after that, I mean, you start looking at some of these other guys. You got, um, you know, you start looking at some of the the different guys like a Julian Weems. Like I like to see what he could have done without injury. You know, he had a really good Al Smith. Um, you know, guy like uh, Costello at 52, uh, real, real solid. I think you look at a guy like uh, Routenbush, qualifying at 38. <laughs> Major, real tough. So, I mean, once you start getting past, you know, this, uh, Easton Doster, real good at 13. I mean, I, I don't think you can move Doster ahead of Gas just because Gas uh, beat Tishner and, and Doster lost to Tishner. But I think uh, I like Schaefer at six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have another guy like Wyatt, uh, or, um, Gavin Davis, who was also injured, um, who had a really good off Smith also. Yeah. So let's see. What are we? We'll do the top ten here, and we'll do we'll do more off the air as we go on. Would you say? Man, I mean, Major and Weems all had some good wins. I mean, is Weems a little bit better than Goss or or uh, Johns? I mean, G- Weems was right up there at one sixty. You know, second at at uh, Al Smith um, beat some. Yeah, lost a good win. He beat um, AJ Steinbeck, who's really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Weems is in that mix. I, I really do think injuries kind of derail this season. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this seeing him a healthy Weems, how he would have how he would have fared. Um, a guy like Jonathan Nice, I, I thought really really was good. Uh, I don't know if he's a top ten guy, but at two twenty, uh, I know he won freshman sophomore this past weekend. Uh, yeah, Caden Brewer, Gavin Davis, another yeah. one. Some in- injury didn't get to wrestle. He hit what he was he f- fifth at Al Smith in a really deep weight yeah. class. I think uh, you know, look at a guy. I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to discredit people's medals either. Uh, like I said, I think Costello had a really good season for Hobart at fifty two. Um, I know. I think he, he did end up having. Double digit losses. I mean, it, it's tough in that mix. And I know he wrestled Bisping a bunch. But he wrestled your guy a bunch. Bricky uh, wrestled. Um, or what you guys wrestle two or three times? Twice, yeah. Twice. Yeah. Uh, I think I don't want to discredit like Gosses and uh, I mean Levi Johns and Goss. I mean, I, I'd give those guys, you know, eight nine. I put Johns at nine. Goss had a pretty good win on Friday night. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, like, I know that, that I know, like, uh, obviously you look at uh, uh, the thing and you're like, oh, you know, he had a, a good win Friday night, but how did he get into that position? You know, it wasn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to discredit what he's doing. You know, he's wrestling a one because he was a fourth of semi-state. It's still a good win. But I mean, some of these guys weren't, uh, I mean, I don't know how many were not fours. You know, obviously Heather Crawl wasn't a four. Yeah. I think it's impressive what Campo did. Uh, Silas Foster, it's uh, it's tough to say like what what he could have done with you know I know he had some good wins but they're not even in the tournament. Yeah, I, I mean yeah, there's some that tenth spot right here that that one's uh probably one of the harder ones to fill. I think Seth Sara is really good. He won a really good freshman sophomore at state this past weekend. Yeah, uh, Sarah, I think uh, that one that one's interesting. I mean. I think uh, he's right in the mix the entire year. He had a lot of good wins, a lot of good losses. I think he's really talented. I would, I almost say I, I think as like if I'm looking at it like and you don't have the, the the ending part of it, I would say he's probably a top ten freshman too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's right in that mix. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of guys. I'll throw we'll put him at ten for now, and then we might adjust it off the air, but. Pretty solid top ten, um, real good deep weight class or deep class now weight class as far as um, as freshmen go. There were what twenty, there's what twenty that have had that were at state this year, which is pretty impressive. Um, 
that's pretty good with eight of uh let's see seven eight nine with metals and two at 182 one at 152 usually you're seeing them they're all at up uh, lower weights so a uh, pretty good pretty good uh senior or class right there yeah and i think uh you have a good mix yeah so like what Hunt, gunner henry did this year was uh really impressive at 182 uh <clears throat> and then like i said we talked about it on on the state show just the way he was able to close the gap with uh vz and well reinhardt was able to do a 52 uh in a, in a pretty stacked weight class i know he gave us uh, i think that was a non-major with going so definitely uh i think once these come out and we're able to get the next 10 i think it'll be pretty close yeah yeah there's a lot of good a lot of talent here. returning yeah it's gonna be i mean it's going to be a pretty solid class and i think this next class coming up is going to be pretty tough too so um the talent you know obviously we have a pretty good uh, senior class right now but the talent's coming right back loading up um some real good guys and girls <laughs> So yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I, I think uh, I, I think Vargo posted in there. Would you have to do the girls separate? Um, I don't know. I think it'd be tough. I, <clears throat> third at eighty two, more impressive than second at one hundred six. If if it wasn't the season that Gendrus had, I mean, I think that he only had the two losses to Hockaday, who's nationally ranked, and then he lost to um, Barrett Jordan, who's number one in the country, and Seth Mendoza, who's a top five guy. Yeah, and Johnson from Homewood Flossmore, who's a you know a top twenty guy. Yeah, yeah, that definitely. I mean, Johnson and Hockaday are both had really good years. Uh, Henry, obviously, Henry and VZ are right up there, and you could shuffle those top four any day of the week, especially at one eighty two. That both yeah. Henry and VZ were pretty. No, I, I, I agree. I mean, like it, it's it's definitely a conversation, you know. Yeah, I mean, I he plays fourth. As a freshman, uh, anything uh, 152 and above, you, that that's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if I uh, and, and I just say that because like obviously those guys are going to grow too, and, and we're going to you know revisit this next year and the year after that. Like I don't think it takes away from what Zeke did with uh, Moran as a freshman, you know, yeah. going back, you know. Yeah, so it's uh, I mean. We'll run with these for now, and we'll maybe change them up a little bit off the air. But we'll we'll do probably about top twenty, uh, off the air and post those hopefully in the next couple of days. Uh, sophomores, I'm not, I'm not even doing rankings right now, and I can still give them loves to the Mooresville Regional. See that? <laughs> <laughs> sophomores, um, this is an interesting class because it's pretty solid, but there's only one guy with a with a title, Kyrell Lavelle. Yeah. I think he's a pretty easy one. Yeah, um, I, I was really impressed with them last year, and I don't know why I didn't pick him to win it this year because uh, I think he's ultra talented. And I, I remember leaving last year thinking that was like the most impressive, the guys most impressed with there, and uh, came out and showed out this year. Yes. Um, let me see. Oops. Sorry. Ah. We had that full of, of sophomores that qualified last year that didn't make it back this year. Yeah, that's one interesting thing. You had like Washburn, I know M. Ryan was hurt, Drake Fritz, Reese Courtney, Evan Cruz, Cody Rollis were all qualifiers last year. Dylan Graham was a semifinalist. Obviously, he got he was injured. So um that was a little bit of a inter I mean that's an interesting one. Uh number two, I mean Haynes probably was would have been a two time placer. Obviously, yeah, I think so. I think uh, he had a bit of the mix. Yeah, um, it's tough. I mean, it's tough to to play ahead like that. But I mean, he's one zero away with a champ, two time champ now. Yeah, two times. You know, <laughs> um, I was really impressed with uh, who else? And we had a couple semifinalists in there. I, I think uh, Will Clark, the All American this past year. Will was the All American, right? Um, I believe Will was, yes. I mean, he, uh, his two losses in the state tournament were to, uh, some really, really tough individuals. I mean, he ended up getting, uh, beat by uh, the West Lafayette kid in the, the finals of semi-state. Then you draw in the same quarter as Sallers and Sallers was on a mission, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Will was the one that was at, uh, was eighth at freestyle nationals 
which that, that's there... something that we do put you know figure in when we're doing these a little bit of some of the national stuff the younger guys it's not as much but um will clark was fifth um i mean i would probably him with the national credential probably is a little bit more probably puts him over a little bit of an edge over the rest of the guys in his uh, group we also have hunter may who was a semi-finalist last year Luke Rio had some good wins. Neil Mosier, Zar Walker, Mitchell Betts, who had a real good, uh, kind of uh, a nice little coming out party this year. So uh, undefeated to the semi state, won a real tough weight. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you have two medals for Hayden DeMarco. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what Dylan Graham could. I, I don't think, I don't know if uh, Graham had the, the season maybe that he wanted to have mm-hmm. going into the state series, and then you lose him to a, a broken ankle. Yeah, I think Eisen gets lost in the shuffle. I mean, Eisen's really tough, too. I mean, third and then loses to a real tough, uh, super tough, you know, Friday night match with Anthony. Yeah, Cameron Clark is two-time qualifier. Let's see. Just going to put these guys up there a little bit so they sort up a little bit higher. Um, yeah. So, there we go. I mean, it's tough. Like if uh, Dylan Graham was maybe undefeated, I know he had a really good win over um, Hunter May at Team State, so I think he's right in the mix. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, injury kind of took him out of there. Yeah, if, if he had, uh, if he had made the Friday, I, I would have guaranteed that he would have won. <laughs> oh, yeah. 80% chance. Yeah. Yeah, I think Brady Eisen's up there. Um, it's, you know, I think we have a more of a recency bias. Does anyone else have any uh, national credentials on there? Um. No. No one has any like Fargo or Super Thirty Two type credentials. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so now I think I think now we're probably looking more at uh, you know state credentials. <clears throat> that third place is pretty impressive for Brady Eisen. I yeah. believe did he, and he lost to Zeke in the semis that year. Yeah, yeah, he lost to Zeke and has. Multiple wins over Cheney Chef. Uh, you know, lost to a guy and that guy ended up getting fourth on Friday yeah. night. I mean, that was a one point match. Just a tough, I mean, that's a tough matchup for those guys, you know? Yeah. You're not even, you know, I mean, we're not even talking about like a three, four, a two, three is always real tough, but that was like a rematch. And, uh, you know, Elijah Anthony's tough, man. He got a win over, uh, he got a really good win over, um, uh, Logan Frazier at IPO, yeah, which is really impressive. Yeah, um, you know, Evan Sang with two medals, two fifth places. Um, Hunter Bay, two medals, yeah, Hunter May with two medals and a semifinalist. Hayden DeMarco with two medals has a lot, a lot of wins over you know, in probably some of the deepest weight classes. The past couple of years, Graham was in the semifinals. Um, Hard, I mean, like you said, Graham's up there. We just don't know where he'd have finished. Um, jumped up what twenty pounds. So yeah, that was. I and, think and, uh, so. So he's a yeah. Team. I, Chishner has a medal and a you know lost a tough one on Friday night. Yeah, upset Friday night. I think uh, I'd probably maybe go Sang. Two fifths, pretty impressive. You know, yeah. you wrestle the weight. That that's kind of where he's at. You know, weight wise, you're not. It's not like he's uh. He's just not a big guy, you know? Yeah. Six and 13. I wouldn't be shocked if he's 120 next year. And he'll still be in the mix. Yep. Um, you know, Duke Myers was a qualifier 70 and uh fifth at 60. It's pretty impressive. Um, Preja had a good good year. Paul Clark with a fourth. Jalen May with a fourth. Hunter May, two state medals. And this year, I mean, even May, May was a little bit banged up this year, too, and ends up yeah. bringing home an eighth. I would. I'm looking at kind of a Clark or May or May. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think um, Clark at at the bigger weight kind of sticks out to me a little bit at 195, where he had some good wins. 220. Or, or 220. Sorry. Yeah, 220. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a good pick. I think that he's uh, pretty impressive. I mean, the Friday night match against uh, Morrow was awesome. Yeah. And he really turned it on towards the end of the season, which is pretty, I mean, that's where you make your money. 
Um, yeah, and then he ran into the state semifinals and helped his team break records. I'd probably go Hunter May after that. Okay. I mean, eighth place, it's it's tough to look at like we're there, but he's also a state semifinalist, and I know he was injured. I mean, he missed a bunch of time for a banged up ankle. Yeah. I mean, that, that's why the Dylan Graham one's a little bit tough because I know Graham had a big win over my team state. I know he was looked pretty hobbled. Yeah. Um, Maybe at that point, then Duke Meyer and Brady Beck. Yeah, Beck was pretty impressive, also. Um, let me see. If he or not Brady Beck, but uh, Mitchell Betts. I'm sorry. But Beck's impressive, too. He's at a huge weight for a sophomore. Yeah, and he was right there to qualify last year as a freshman. Um, let's see. So you're saying number 10 would be Betts, who was sixth? I mean, I mean, you see those guys a little bit more than yeah. I do, obviously. I. I don't get to see a ton of Rochester, and those guys are on the same team. Yeah. Um. I think Jose Smith, Jose Smith, uh, it's pretty impressive too. I mean, yeah, that was yeah. Fifth, he had a, I mean, especially, yeah. I think where he, I think he had to like win a spot to get on. Like, I think he had really had to win his spot to get in there too. Yeah, there's a lot of this. Ten through about twenty, is pretty tough here with this uh, this class. Even though you know top heavy. Well, it's not really as top heavy as some of the other classes, but this middle tier of the guys that are, you know, they're going to start making a really big jump in this next year. So it's going to be interesting to see these guys. DeMarco. Yeah. I mean, I guess DeMarco's double medalist. I mean, Chris is right. Yeah. I mean, you got two medals. I mean, you're in two pretty solid weight classes. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, a guy that I think that when we revisit this could be a guy that jumps out there. I know they put Rio in there. Someone said Rio. Rio could be in the mix. Um, I think he was undersized last year, was able to come out this year and compete. Uh, a guy like um, Tony Woods, who's incredibly tough, has had some really tough Friday night draws. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you get a guy like Kyra Lavelle this year. I mean, and that's a match that everyone's kind of putting eyes on, you know? Yeah, you got Two guys. Four. The, you know, Hinton and Leach both have had good success at upper weights. Two time, you know, oh, yeah. punching tickets twice at pretty solid weights. Um, Very solid weights. Uh, um, Bo Brabender, Bryce Denton, you know, some guys that are right on there. You know, anytime you can make it, you know, you're on pace to go to state four times. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and Bo Brabender did it in two uh, semi states. Man, that has yeah. to count a little bit higher. Um, but yeah, you're. you're I think Tony Wood of the guys that are don't have a medal, I think um, is pretty impressive. I, I think that'll be one when we go back. I could see him getting into the state semifinals next year. Yeah, I mean he had like a and one we, one point match with uh, Aiden Spray. He said I mean, he had some good matches with some top guys, and I think that was just a bad matchup on a Friday night. Anytime you draw Evansville right now on Friday night, that's yeah. not a good matchup. And I knew that as I you know. I think any of the other other matches he's probably favored in any of the other two semi states, but that's yeah. I think it, this would be a good group. I think there's gonna be a lot of medals. This this is gonna be a lot harder conversation next year. You got a guy like Jackson Weigart, who uh, I think really came on. They really coached him up to and got him a semi state championship, a medal. You know, think about what you can do if you have him in a room for a full year with that staff. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's gonna have a partner in uh, Jose Smith. Those two guys up top, uh, Zara Walker. I think this is. He, I think he's kind of ahead of schedule. I don't believe Joe medaled until he was a junior. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, Mosier had a real good run. Yep. And he's yeah. There's some good guys in here. This, I mean, yeah. This this class is gonna. I mean, usually that sophomore year, sophomore to junior years, when you see a lot of guys really make a make some huge jumps. And you're gonna see some. Of the, you're gonna see a lot more of these guys. Uh, obviously, right now there's only been two under the lights. Um, you're gonna see a lot of them under the lights next year. Um, oh yeah. And possibly a lot more titles. So, um, do we want to go to 15 with these guys, or do you want to? Uh, I mean, we go. Uh, I don't know. We could do that one off air. I mean, we got a okay. lot. I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna kill us. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this is a good. This is this one's good. I th I think this is a really good uh, grouping right here. Yes, it is. Um, kind of have these all a little bit sorted out. Number one, Christian Carroll. Uh, that's pretty pretty easy. Obviously, he only has one title, but he has two. He has more Super Thirty Two titles, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, <laughs> and a Fargo title. 
ranked number one in the state or in the country. In our um, hearts. <laughs> in our hearts. Yes. Super nice kid. Yes. Uh, yes. And an impressive run. I think uh, <clears throat> that two three is gonna be tough. I, I think uh, I know Jackson got two titles. Um, I think Logan Frazier might be number two, and I think Logan Frazier, you know, two one two three. If uh, Sergio Lemley, may, you know, stayed at Mount Carmel, he might be three three one one. You know, his only loss at the state finals. He has two losses. He lost to Cheney Chef, and he lost to um, Zeke. And Zeke. Yeah. Or no, he didn't. He didn't lose to Zeke. Uh, he lost to Sergio. Sergio. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, and Sergio, you know, he's gonna, you know, Sergio's not on the list, but Sergio might be going for a four. You know. If this was, if he was in Indiana, I would think that he'd be going for four. Yeah. He's gonna be going for four, but he's gonna have three in Illinois and one in Indiana, which is, you know, not how they usually do it, right? Yeah, yeah. And he had a real good. I mean, he had a pretty tough weight class last. I mean, this, you know, to win his third title. Had to, oh yeah, he had to be Vincent Robinson, who's the real deal. Yeah, like that dude's no joke. Uh, and then I, I think Ashton Jackson. You don't discredit his titles too. Yeah. I, I think Chris is in a spot on. I think Cheney Chef's up there. You know, three two two. If it wasn't for Zeke, I mean, I mean those guys like Chef might have a couple more championships. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If, um, if he doesn't, if he doesn't get a dub, like where you know, if he might be the best to never win it. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I mean, you're in the semifinals four times. I mean, you're talking. That's, I mean, that's Ty Mills. I mean, Ty Mills was what second and third twice each. Um, yeah. Really impressive career. Pins the number one guy in the country <laughs> in his yeah. last, uh, basically his last high school match. So, um, yeah, that's a. Uh, I think. Oof. I think we're splitting hairs, but I think I think Cheney might be, you know, four. Sam going five or five. However, however that makes out, maybe four or five there. However, those guys are. Yeah, I mean that's not a. I mean, Chef said his. His losses are no. I mean, he lost to. Is he also Zeke all three years? Uh, I'm not sure. I think so. But I think, but the, the other part to that is like he has like to have to win wars, like even to get there, right? He has uh, Ison. I mean, he he has to wrestle Ison every single week. It feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's it's pretty impressive. Um, so five is going. I mean, again, do any of these guys uh, do any of these guys have any national results? Um, Any all Americans? I know Leighton Jones has been ranked in the nation. Yeah, Leighton's been ranked up. I think he dropped out this um, the last rankings update, at least for the one I was looking at. Uh, Billerman might have placed at like freshman or sophomore nationals. Um, uh, Goen was uh, he won IPO. Which is pretty, which is pretty good weight class. Um, it was a really good weight class. Yeah, I don't think anyone else has any of the big event national credentials. Obviously, Purdy's had some when he was younger. Cheney's first one lost in the finals with the Cotty. Okay, Cotty, yeah, it's not a bad. <laughs> no, it has four finals appearances. So, and then from there, um, let's see, uh. You're looking at I mean, do you, how do you weigh a guy like Roman to like um, Cole Solomy? Roman Solomy Cruz. Um, I mean, Solomy was pretty dominant this year. Other than there's one guy that beat him. Yeah, and you know, I, I'd say a guy like Bryce Lowry. You know, yeah, Lowry has three matches. medals. Um, because Solomy beat him. I'd probably put. I mean, Solomy beat a, a good. Bryce Lowry. I'd probably put yeah, him there. Probably Roman 7 and Cruz 8. And that's yeah. That's kind of – we're. I mean, obviously right now we're, we're really splitting hairs. So don't take any offense to any of these rankings. <laughs> no. Um, you know, and then I think you, got, you have some other mix in there too. You have guys like um, – you, you look at a three, guy. Yeah, Torres with three medals. Um, yeah, but I, I mean, I don't know. Do you do you weigh one win over another? Like, I mean, Ryder Cersei, runner up, you know, yeah. beat him in the semis. Um, you know, Joey Butler went on a really good run this year. 
I think he's been on a run the last two years. Had a really good match uh, <clears throat> with um, uh, Ike for Ike last year in the, in the quarters. You know, Toby Billerman, two-time semifinalist now. Uh, Leighton Jones, two-time semifinalist at heavyweight. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm looking at... Seriously, B. Congratulations to Leighton Jones, too. Yeah. yeah uh, Leighton Gilbert down there got three medals. Leighton Jones uh, committed to play football at Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, Leighton Gilbert was two times in the semifinals. Lost, like, dislocated his elbow, I believe. Um, so yeah. he's one that we can't that really passes. overlook. Yeah, yeah, I think I think he's probably higher, honestly, on the list. I mean, he's had some national success too with, uh, you know, some uh, some uh, what you call it, Pan American Games. Yeah, he's done pretty well nationally. I mean, Jones has done fairly well now. He has a Fargo. He was an All American at Fargo as a going into his freshman year. Um, I'd probably put. I mean, Billerman's been there under the lights. Ball, Butler. Oh man. Yeah, Anthony Ball had an amazing run this year. Yeah. Um, that match with uh, Anthony in the semis was was huge for him. Yeah. Um, man, this one's. <laughs> it's nine ten. Oh, man, I mean, I'm leaning like Leighton, you know, obviously with a little bit of national credentials, but then. Guys under the lights kind of yeah, overshadow that a little bit. I mean, I mean, Searcy has, you know, probably, got, I mean, I'm looking at Torres also with three medals, but Searcy beat him. So obviously, I mean, this is yeah. kind of a pound for pound if they were all the same weight class, but also kind of looking at college type, you know, higher levels at the same time. I'd probably put Searcy nine, I think, maybe. I mean, uh, or, or he, I mean, because uh, he's had some tough. Who did he lose to in the uh, ticket round? I know he had some tough ticket rounds. He's a, he's a freshman sophomore champ. Yeah, let's see. Last year in the ticket round, he had. He lost to AJ Gunn, sixteen thirteen. Ah, he can put up points. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, ooh, man. Link, or in Torres, that that's a tough loss for him. Yeah. You know, I think uh, Leighton Jones uh, losing to Big Mike. I mean, obviously Big Mike's getting ready to go re represent Indiana. I think two-thirds for Leighton Jones is pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. At heavyweight, coming back, and then Joey, but Joey Butler's take around is a – Freshman was a uh, loss to Cole Ross, so he's pretty good too. So eighth, second, two times there, two medals, uh, right there with um, he was right there with Frazier. So we'll go to Jones Butler. Um, so we got a couple guys. We'll go with the fifteen right here. <laughs> yeah, I um, think uh, I'd probably put Gilbert probably eleven. I think he's probably yeah. right there. I mean, you don't. Yeah, want to... I, the the blemish on him is just gonna be that eighth. But you know, like we we obviously know he was hurt. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a kind of maybe he was hurt. No, he had like literally he had a dislocated elbow and finished the match, which is crazy to me. Yeah. Um. Uh, maybe ball. I mean, you got a fifth and a second, and then maybe uh, Searcy, then Torres. What about Billerman? Ball? Billerman. Uh, Billerman's a second and a third. Billerman, Ball, Searcy, Torres. And you still got guys like Purdy, Bryce Lowry with three medals. Jeez. Um this is a, I mean, this yeah. is like a this is a pretty deep weight class. This junior class is, junior is class. tough, man. Yeah. You got a guy and, and you got a guy like Cody Goodwin who who knows what he could have done, yeah. you know. Um in different circumstances. Uh, those are some pretty good, you know, you're still looking at, there's three semi four semifinalists. They're still not in the top yeah. 15. So, I mean, you're looking at the top 20 here and I think, you know, Blake Wolf's incredibly tough. Uh, yeah. Hayden Bird is tough. 
Haiti Brady's had some tough Friday nights. Uh, it was good to see him punch through this year. I think Bryce Lauer needs probably to be higher there. Um, three medals. I, I I wouldn't be shocked if he wins it next year. Yeah. I don't know what weight he'll be. He likes to jump. <laughs> but, um, you know, John Purdy is an uh, ultra-athletic kid. Uh, I think, well, it's tough because, I you know, I, I would say Will Clark's really high up there. He's a fireball All-American. But, you know, you see that, that match and you're just kind of like – that's that's your like last impression, you know. But you know how tough he is. He had a, a good win over uh, Sellers this year. Uh, you know Blake Wolf undefeated going into the the state finals. Um, he's kind of won the track along the way, right? Yeah. I'd probably put. Mm. He said you skipped sixteens uh, on there. All right. Yeah, Lowry, Goodwin, Purdy. You got Wolf or Brady. Both were semifinalists. Probably yeah, Brady. He's been there a couple more times. I mean, Wolf yeah. lost to. Uh, Wolf had a tough one. I mean, Wolf. What he lost to? Um, 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 uh, he he drew uh, Cotty in the ticket round his freshman year when he was undefeated. Yeah, not not an easy draw. Yeah, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, pretty good top twenty there, and we're still leaving off. Lost the Chase Chef as a. Uh... Lost a uh, Cheney Chef, and Nam Doan is in Illinois. Um, and you got, you got some guys, some other medals down here. You got a guy like Koi Hammock who's been there a couple times. Uh, yeah, he has you one know. medal, right? That's wrong. Is that correct? I think he has one medal, yep. Yeah. Yeah, we got and you have some guys down here that, you know, can make some noise going, going forward. I mean, yeah. I mean, the guy like A.J. Steinbeck, you know, three times been there. Like, that – He's had some really tough draws, you know. Yeah, yeah looking at some of the qualifiers, uh, Tommy Morrill, uh, RD3, Tristan Chavez, Armin Kukileon. Ronan Hammond, Chavez, those guys like to put up points. Ronan Hammond was going for broke Friday night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tyson Pond, a freshman. Far more too. Been there twice. Hunter Page is sixth in the qualifier. Cash Turner seven, had a real good year. Um, Chance Harris, Evan Tilton, Logan Ullman, Caden Lone, all with seventh place. I don't know why I'll have to fix that. Um, Corey Hammock yeah. was a semifinalist two years ago. Boston take around this year, or semi state, maybe take around. Had a real tough year. I know his family was dealing with a lot of stuff right there. Never easy to wrestle in those situations. Yeah. There's a lot of guys here. Oof. So. We'll finish. We'll probably do 25 or 30 on this one off the air, but pretty good top 20 here in this group. Um, oh, yeah. So make sure you buy your – the tickets are going on sale tonight at 10 o'clock, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you get your state finals tickets for next year. It looks like it's going to be a good tournament. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of good guys there. Um, this is going to be a fun one, another good one. Our senior class. Uh, real good senior class, obviously. Um, one and two are pretty, pretty cut and dry. I don't think anyone's going to argue Mendez Seltzer. I think Seltzer would be number one any other year, pretty much, other yep. than a year with a four timer. Uh, really impressive career, to say the least. Um, yeah. So then we got Conway, uh, Bauman, Bowman, and then Sollers. Uh, all with two titles. Um, let's see, I'm trying to. Yeah, I think Sallers is probably uh, right up there. I mean, his 117, all are pretty big weights. Yeah. Um, this, these next uh, three, two guys with two titles, probably lean a little bit. Let those guys, yeah, um, you can lean towards Jay Conway. Let Sallers and Bauman, they can fight that out in the room. Yeah. And spring break. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, see, Sellers placed at Fargo. Or, uh, Bowman, placed, Super Bowman Super. placed at, at, at Fargo. Sellers placed at Super 32. Conway was one from placing at Super at Fargo. So, I would probably put... Man. Sellers did take a loss to Purdy this year. I'd probably put Bowman. I mean, I mean, we're splitting hairs here. Do you put Conway yeah. still at number three, or? I mean, go. I mean, 
Uh, Bowman dominated this year, right? Yeah. Like uh, yeah, the he, tournament. Yeah. He, he looked real good. Uh, maybe Bowman, Sellers, Conway. Just you know, those two guys had some, you know, national. And, and Sellers was really tough at Super 32. Yeah, he was a semifinalist. And he got Buchanan and Watson. I'd probably put Watson then Buchanan. Um, yeah, I agree. I both agree have had that. pretty similar national success. Um, eight. Um, do we throw? You know, we got the only other guy with a title is a Fishback. You got guys Porter, Barkett, um, Aiden Sprague has three medals. You know, looking at guys with multiple medals. Um, Bill and Stroud. I, I, I agree. Cool has multiple medals. Um, Mateo Vargo. He probably, yeah. Um, what are we, I mean, this was, the, uh, this uh, next 10 is going to be extremely fun. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we, um, I don't think we discount what <clears throat> Fishback did, but like, I think overall body of works, the toughest. Does anybody else have any national stuff that they've done? Um, uh, going down. I don't think Ike's never right. Ike placed but, the Ipo. He hasn't done anything else. Barkett. I think he was second at Ipo, and then he uh, had like a USAW like uh, folk style nationals placement. Um, I'm trying to look at anyone else here. Um, not really any other national level stuff. For these guys, you got someone like KT Nelson at bookends. Yeah, and he's an IPO champ. Yeah, Logan Miller. You know, it's a, it's a tough way to go out. Obviously, uh, talented career. Vargo, uh, Koontz. Koontz got three medals. Um, yeah. Oof. He's been under the lights before. Um, Vargo had, what was you know, lost to Zeke and then um, had a real close match. Joey Butler this Butler. year. Um, oof. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Um, I would say, oof. I think I think Kuntz is a top ten guy. I think uh, three medals under the lights with Mendez. Uh, lost last year. Uh, who did he lose to in the semis last year? Um, I'm not sure. And then lost to Watson this year. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Oops. You know, Dickie's only got the, Dickie's only got the two losses at state to, uh, to Jackson, who's a champ. So put Koontz at a 10. Let's see what we have here. Um, yeah, I mean, Cade Law has two medals, a second and a third. I think he has about the in a qualifier. I'd say you put yeah, he's up there, and then he had like a knee injury one of those years in there yeah, too, right? Yeah, I'd say. I mean, body of work, uh, Koontz probably has had the best. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I mean, I think Vargo's. Out of state stuff is pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, I think he, he's probably in the mix there. Uh what was Critchfield? Was Critchfield a runner up in Illinois? No, he was like a third and a fifth or seventh, something of that nature. I think Ike's up there. Yeah. Um I think Rubel, you know, is up in the mix. Let's see. Got Jeffrey Bailey. Um, so you got Koontz at a nine. Do you put someone like uh, Cade Law who had a? I mean, he was an overtime takedown yeah. from a title. Yeah, I think so. I think he's probably he's up there at the top. Uh, let's see, yeah, I think I think that's that's fair. I mean, he's right there. Yeah. So then we got. Oops. I mean, started. Juan Grange lost a tough one last year to kind of bark it in the ticket round. I mean that was his other in Indiana um, experience. I mean how much? I mean you got. I mean what's tough is a guy like. Um, I don't know what happened to my Koontz? 
Yeah, he lost to Conway. Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay, there we go. Coots. You got him at Yeah, eight. so that, that was his state finals losses. Mendez, uh, <clears throat> Conway, and he lost to uh, Watson. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Not too shabby for a state finals. Just, you know, kind of the era he's in, man. That, that area is it's just tough. Yeah. Um. Juwan. Oh, okay. It's like Juwan. Okay, so number 10. You probably put Fish back in as a 10. Yeah. I, I think you give fish back, you know, like he obviously only has the one, you know, the one experience, but that's huge. I mean, like that was state championship. Yeah. It's huge did. for his program. For, it's huge for his school. Yeah. Hayden Shepard's a tough one, you know, qualifier, qualifier, sixth, incredibly difficult ticket round. Um, one year he had, I want to say one year he had Jesse. He had, he had some tough ticket round mat or Friday night matches. Um, um, so Landon Poe, seventh, third, seventh qualifier. Pretty good. Um, you know, Dickie's third, second, uh, who else, who else is on there? Evan Dickey is a guy that's been under the lights. Anyone else been under the lights? Tyler Jones with three state medals. Pretty impressive. Uh, Gage DeMarco uh, with two semifinalists. two semifinalists. Um, Elijah Anthony, some incredibly tough draws on Friday night. Yeah. Uh, had a reverse and incredibly tough draw Friday night this year. Aiden Sprague, really good career. I mean, Logan Miller, I, I don't know. That, that one's tough, man. That's, that's the one that's like the hard one because I think he's that talented. But like also, he, you know, those last two last year, uh, missing weight or, or or whatever, didn't show up to every I'm not sure. And then, um, you know, this year at the headlock at the semi-state. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He, he wins a title or he's top four. I mean, I, I, he's, I he's, agree or, with that. He's probably top ten here. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he's a top – I don't think you put him in the top 10 probably. I mean, you give those guys their due, but I think he's in the mix. Yeah. Uh, I still think he's up there. I think um, talent-wise, he's incredibly good. Barkett, who uh, – he's just gradually improved every year. Uh, yeah. Went from a qualifier, you know. seventh, second. Um, I'm probably – I'd say probably Barkett, number 11. Yeah. And then, I mean, I don't know. Either I think Vargo or Ruble. I mean, however, when you lean, I don't know how those guys ever uh, shook out. Yeah. I wish that we could have saw. Uh, I mean, but that again, like, do you put a guy like um, Logan Miller over Ruble? Like one of those two is the Logan Miller. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oof. Um, Where's Logan at? Logan is right there. There's a lot of guys in this this whole. I mean, we'll go to 15 right here. Um, you got Porter, Grange, Big Mike, Evan. I mean, I'd probably give a little bit of the edge to uh, Fargo, higher place tonight, as a senior. TJ, yeah. TJ said when those 22, 23 rankings coming out tonight. <laughs> tonight, they're already ready. Yes, with projections. <laughs> So, the yeah. way too early rankings. Um, you got Dickey was under the lights. You got Logan Miller, uh, Aiden Sprague with three medals. Tyler Jones with three medals. Um, yeah, Aiden Sprague, and I mean, I know he was banged up too. Yeah, the People's Champ. Uh, <laughs> uh, really tough, man. I think. Um, I think uh, he's right in the mix there too. Yeah. Uh, I, I think. I mean, I personally think I would probably go Logan Miller ahead of him, but really good. I think, uh, but those guys are, I mean, splitting hairs. I think it's tough. Yeah. I would say, okay, you got Logan Miller at 14. 15. Let's see. I think anyone, like anyone that like debates that one, like, that was, that like sent shock. Like, that was like everyone sent text from Evansville as soon as they, yes. like, they were trying to figure out. Who can I text that's not here? Yeah. If it was, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Border. Fifteen there. Yeah, we're looking at fifteen. And Grange had three losses this year: two to Carroll, one to Jones. Um. Aiden Sprague's got three medals in a qualifier. Tyler Jones got three medals. Uh. <clears throat> yeah. Critchfield got three medals. Two in Illinois, one in Indiana. 
Uh, Juan Grange got to see the non-Indiana wrestle back last year, yeah. or he could have possibly been a medalist. Yeah, he was right in there. Beats multiple placers and stuff. Elijah Anthony just had some unfortunate luck. Seeing if there's anyone else with Jeffrey Bailey, uh, you know, two-time medalist for a school that's never even had a medalist. It's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Jared Brooks, two medals. Let's see, Brayden Haynes, two medals. Don't have him in there. Um, lots of guys with, yeah, pretty long list of pretty good guys in this, uh, in this class. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think obviously as you get higher up, you're gonna get more uh, experience. It's <clears throat> who should be our number fifteen? Porter, Grange, Big Mike. Oof. I think you know. I think Porter, Grange, or uh, Jones, or Sprague. Porter got under the lights in a pretty good weight class. Yeah. Had a, he had to win some real tough matches along the way to get there. Had to beat a real tough uh, Hayden Shepard to put him in a, an incredible, an incredibly tough uh, draw with uh, Buchanan. Yeah. I and mean, Buchanan's incredibly tough. Let's see. How does this look? 17 Sprague Jones, three medals. A little bit higher than Sprague's Grange. Yeah. Dick, yeah, I think nineteen twenty. I think it'd be nineteen twenty that way. I mean, we'd probably go thirty on this one if we really wanted to. Yeah. Oh yeah. We'll work on these off the air. <laughs> and we'll get to actually we'll probably do about fifth uh we'll do fifty, probably mostly kind of based on points as you get to this, you know, who's who's uh who's finished the highest after that. Cause it gets I mean, we're getting to a point where we're splitting hairs over guys that have meddled multiple times, you know. Yeah, Third, six, seven, five, six, six, qualifier. You know th those types of things. It's, I mean, it's like one of those things that, um, a lot to discuss. Um, pound for pound, number one. We can go pretty. This is overall all years. You know, basically, who's the best wrestler in Indiana right now? Um, pretty easy to go out. one, two, and probably three. Yeah. Those I don't think, um, and and I mean, and we can you can definitely make arguments for Carol over Mendez, um, and no one's gonna disagree with you. I think Mendez just uh, I mean, I think may, probably being a year if you know you take Mendez as a junior versus Carol as a junior, I think you can make a stronger argument for Carol, but Jesse has a little bit more of a longer resume right now. So yeah, you know, Jesse, Jesse as a junior went out and tech the dude that was started in NCAA's. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, if, if Christian, I mean, like who was third at heavyweight last year, Mason Paris, if you go out and test Mason Paris, yeah, that'd have been, <laughs> was it? No, I think it was big tone. <laughs> yeah. If he, goes out, if he goes out and text Tony Cassiopeia, I'll bump him. <laughs> or if you go the other way, who was, who was at 97? If he goes out there and smashes even a Jake Warner or yeah. Lucas Davidson, what we can we can bump them up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, when you put it in perspective like that, do we still feel like Jesse's one? <laughs> yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. No, but both are incredible wrestlers, and it's definitely it's you know it, yeah. it's good. It's a good problem to have in Indiana right now. If we're, if we're splitting hairs, at who's the best wrestler in the in the in the in the state? So yeah, um, you know, making a couple world teams and stuff. That's you know, as as we talked about last time. You know what uh, is Jesse the best yeah. ever? The, Think the about that, like man, you're gonna have guys that probably watch this show, or are gonna watch this show, or kids are gonna watch this show that may never leave Indiana, may never leave the Midwest. Like wrestling's taking that guy across the world. Yeah, <laughs> like that guy's been in other countries on his wrestling ability, and I think that's pretty amazing. That's pretty like I mean, that guy. Yeah, I'm watching uh, when he went to his first Pan Ams. I think it was in like uh, Medellin, uh, Colombia, and I'm like watching Narcos, and I'm thinking like, this is where Hector's sending his kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a uh, that was pretty. I mean, like like even uh, someone like uh, Sarah Hildebrand. You know, she's one of her things is I remember seeing her a couple years ago saying she filled up her passport book, had to get a second one. 
that's freaking awesome. I mean, being able to just okay. do that kind of stuff through mine wrestling just, and, and most of those trips just, are probably paid for. <laughs> mine, uh, mine just retired. So expired. So I got a new one. <laughs> I only have about seven stamps in it. <laughs> I have one to mine. I went to Mexico once, but I'll be in Detroit in a couple of weeks. So maybe I'll head over to Canada. Sneak into Canada. Know. Yeah. Get the Canadian flag punched on there. Yeah. I was maybe. looking at hotels for NCAs and I'm like, Oh man, this is like, like you're going to go to runs real close. And it's like, the runs real close are like four or 500 bucks. And then I'm like, Oh, there's one about a mile away. And it's only like 70 bucks. I'm like, there's something up. Is this in like a bad area? No, it's in Windsor. Well, it could be in a bad area too when they start getting numbers. Yeah, yes. When they're only double digits, I get I get a little worried about those kind of hotels. Oh uh, no, I'm talking about the streets, man. Oh, you, yes. know, you know, <laughs> you can go eight miles, seven miles, six miles. Oh yes, yes. I have to go visit eight mile. So, uh, number four. Just, yeah, go ahead. It's just all right. Yeah. So, uh, number four. What do we have here? We had Soller, uh, Bowman, Sollers. Uh, you know, we had Bowman, Sollers, Conway. Do any of the yeah. juniors bump them? Does anyone like Gowen, Frazier, Watson, uh, you know, Gowen or Frazier Jackson. or Jackson? Uh, bump those guys. I don't think, I don't think any of them do. Uh, I, I don't think they bump those guys. So, um, six overall. Oof. Now this one, now we're going to get some. I mean, about Who do we have guys. next? Do we, we have Watson next? Was Watson us uh, the next guy on that list? Uh, yeah. I mean, that, Watson then that one, three is pretty good. I, I'd probably go Watson. Watson. And he's had some. He's had some really good success at uh, like uh, at IPO. Yeah, they were both. They're rook. They're both in the blood round at uh, at the uh, at Super Thirty Two also. So that's pretty impressive. Um, so we got Watson Buchanan. Probably thinking Frazier. Frazier Jackson. Jackson. Going. Lavelle. Yeah. Lavelle, and then Hockaday. Uh, yeah. I mean, Hockaday is a nationally ranked wrestler. Yeah. I mean, I understand that's 106, but I mean, I'd say probably put Hockaday at. He was also an IPO champ, which, yeah. uh, which I mean, it, ha it has some weight. It's good. Yeah. It's a really good. Yeah. So, um, now we're going to start getting splitting some hairs here. <laughs> can we get to 20? Let's see. It's 25. I'm making all these 25 so we can sort them better. Um, So we got other guys with. Make sure I'm not missing anybody. Richfield, Aiden Farmer. You got Tyler Jones with three medals. Cheney, three medals. Layton Jones, two semifinals. Yeah, uh, yeah Cheney, obviously. Henry. Oops, there we go. Miller. No, sir. Sergio? <laughs> what I think we? we're sleeping on Sergio. It needs to be higher. Yes, yes. Let's see. Madande. What could have been. Yeah, I like to see how he... Uh... Got Koontz in there. Got Gage DeMarco. I would like to see how uh, Big Mo would have competed at uh, at heavyweight this year. I mean, obviously, you guys wrestled him last year under the lights. Yeah. I, I love thinking that. I mean, we had that talk last year that I thought I thought he would make a run this year, and then Purdue shut his season down. Yes, you got someone like Gilbert May. Okay, here we go. Six third, Bison. Okay, so bring those guys up to the front. So thirteen. Um, no one else. Well, we got the only other. Champion would be Fishback. I think he's going to get pushed down a little bit further just because of resumes yeah. of everybody else. I mean, someone like yeah. Ed Law, pretty impressive resume. Cole Salome. Yeah. Um, you know, Roman, I agree with those. Roman under, you know, you say, would you say Law at 13? Uh, or, man, 
I don't know. Roman, that's a tough one. You lose to Mendez and you lose to Goin. Uh, but, I mean, maybe Roman. I mean, Roman, you're, you're right. He's a takedown away. Yeah. Roman. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. some of them are hard. Like, some of them are going to be incredibly hard. Like, a, a Preston Haynes. Like, how do you how do you wait a Preston Haynes? He lost his freshman year. Yeah. And then as a runner-up. He was fourth at uh, IPO right before yeah. his freshman year. Um. I had a t- I had a real close one with uh with uh Barrick Jordan actually. <laughs> For a, I mean like Sal like are you talking about at at uh, Carnahan? No, at uh he, he uh Haynes wrestled uh um he wrestled Barrick Jordan at uh at IPO. Okay. Jordan was third at IPO, number one ranked in the country. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Not too shabby. Yeah. So you get third at IPO, you can be number one in the country. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you got Jandris who is pretty close to I mean he only has one one year of a of you know a resume but he was one point away from a you know the number one guy um and yeah. real close <laughs> pretty darn close in a couple of, a couple of those last uh, flurries um I had to plug my computer and I didn't know we were going to go this long <laughs> Uh-oh um, <laughs> It's all right Let's see I need to Just top row. There we go. So yeah, we're going a lot longer than I anticipated also. No, we haven't even talked about uh incoming freshmen yet. Yeah. That might have to be for another show. <laughs> oh man, you're gonna make everyone wait till next year? <laughs> I don't know. Um fourteen oh, man. I mean, I think Salome has a pretty good career with one more year left. Yeah. I mean, Cruz, Cruz pretty good. I mean, those are all been a pretty big weights too. Uh, I mean, ball, you, you got a fifth and a second behind, uh, behind the guy that's up there. Number 10. Yeah. In the lineup. Uh, I mean, Butler, the ticket around loss of Cole Ross, Toby Bellerman. You got a guy like, uh, <clears throat> see so you got salami Cruz, law ball millerman say barkett's probably number 19 uh, i'd probably go bark a little, maybe a little bit lower on that i, I don't know Look, i mean runner up lower and as in like a seven like as 19 pound for yeah. pound yeah uh a little bit higher i mean i don't know i, I think we're going pretty good. I mean, it's tough. A seventh and a second. I mean, Big yeah. Mike's a seventh and a second. Yeah. I mean, that's Monster Fishback could be higher. Um, Wayne Gilbert's got three medals and a dislocated oval at the state finals this year. I know he's a Pan American champ. I mean, you got a second, third, first, fifth, third from uh, Vargo. I mean, Cheney's been under the lights two times. He's only lost to guys that have multiple titles. I mean, you're talking, you know, second, second, third. You lost to uh, Caddy and um, Zeke twice. If I mean, you talk, you know, a guy like, uh, you know, Leighton Jones ran into a monster last year. Couldn't help, you know. <laughs> uh, kind of just lost his mind for a second in the semis against uh, Big Mike. Yeah. Can't be trying to lat drop that guy with no momentum. That guy's too big and strong. Yes. So, I mean... I'm probably thinking, you know. Is Chaney, do you think, do you feel like Cheney Chef's better than Lane Gilbert? Yeah. I'd say Chef probably at, let's see, let me try to move these guys down. These guys seem to be in a little bit different tier as of right now. Bad thing is Fishbacks, we can place Fishback and then we can place the other two heavyweights since he was above them. Yeah. So, let's see. I would say Chef. I think what Chef's done has been pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, you know, four, three times being in the semifinals um, is pretty impressive. Has some pretty good weights. Um, yeah, I and mean, you're talking about he's lost to some, you know, I and mean, there was nothing. He he won the semi state. I mean, he put himself in the best position he could have just ended up, you know, in Indiana because we just do blind draws. Yeah. Drew up on the same side as Zeke. Yeah. So do we put, I mean, if we put Rubel in there, do we put Vest over him too then? 
you know, best beat him. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's I a lot know. of guys that we can put in, in front of him there. Um, at yeah. 120. I mean, yeah. I mean, how much weight does that have? I mean, yeah. Do you, are you going to weigh it out like one match? Yeah. I mean, he did beat, I mean, he's one and one with Vest. Vest beat him more when it counted. Yeah. Um, I mean, essentially, then you had, then you, then you had to take uh, Logan Miller off the, the list. Yeah. I mean, no, no disrespect to Jared Dunn, but he's not on the list, you know? All right, looking. Let's see if this one works like this. Let's see. Here we go. So 20 Chef, Vargo. Oh, wait. I mean, like, you're going to have a guy like Butler ahead of Vargo. I mean, you got to win there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's tough because now, now we're getting into like the, this is like the bottom. Like, this is how we do like the rankings, like 12 <laughs> through like 22. We just, they're just going to put it out and say, hey, if it's wrong, just tell us. Yes. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Here we go. The bad thing is, some of these guys have wrestled. So you got Butler over Vargo, Gilbert, Ruble, Fishback. Big Mike Jones, yeah. Then Genders probably comes in there. I mean, that's just a weight thing. Haynes, um, Haynes is right in that mix. I'd probably have Chris Newman further down. Yeah, he's pretty high up there. Yeah. I, I still think Matthew Coons, uh, incredibly tough weights. Um, let's see. Let's put these guys. And we can go to. We can go really deep with these guys. <laughs> I mean, this is overall everybody. 30, probably Koontz. Now we're looking at. <laughs> In spray, you know, handful of medals. Lowry, handful of medals. DeMarco, two time semifinalist. Tyler Jones, medals. Yeah, Logan Miller has a, has a title. Yeah. No one else. Okay, we still got some guys with placers. DeMarco, two medals. Haynes, two medals. Let's see, anyone else with two? I'm putting all the guys with two medals up there. That's our next. Yeah, Ben Phillips. I forgot about him. Evan uh, Aiden Torres got, got three medals. Best. Yeah. Pretty deep here. Okay, so let's write that. Smallest largest. Okay, there we go. Um try to Ellie. I think that one through thirty is gonna have to maneuver some of that around though. Yeah. As a it... Yeah, we'll do this a little bit more offline. I think uh that's a pretty good top thirty. We'll add some more offline and kind of discuss it a little bit better. Because, uh, I mean, right now you're getting into guys with multiple medals. You got some freshmen and, you know, that were in semifinals. You got guys of under the lights. I mean, a lot of really good guys sitting in here in this next 20 that you can really start splitting hairs with. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, though, you can start putting guys in there that, uh, you know, obviously there's some in there like Donahoe and those guys don't they are they're not in the state anymore. Yeah. But <laughs> oh jeez. I thought I deleted them. There we go. Um Yeah, so uh deleted. So yeah, lots of uh lots of pretty good guys in this list. Um we'll probably do about we might do fifty <laughs> if we want to. So um you wanna talk about some of the incoming freshmen? I guess we have a little bit of time. Yeah, I think uh, <clears throat> you know we we I think the, the people that do the the youth board are pretty good. They do a really good job. I think the 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 hard part about the incoming freshmen now is like you don't always know if they're incoming freshmen. I guess is that weird? Like yeah, some of those guys are gonna to be a held back, and some of those guys. So I know like some people are like, well, this guy's gonna be really good, but I don't know if he's gonna end up in high school next year. I know uh, on the youth forum, on the main page, uh, they do a top 50 of all um, middle school. Well, it's 49. 
<laughs> but I don't know, why didn't they just go fifty? That's, Being unique. Yeah. But uh, I think you see a lot of the same guys up there. You see guys like uh, uh, Landon Hawkins. Obviously, I think we, a lot of people have talked about him. He had a really good IPO. I think he was the only middle schooler to place at IPO, correct? Yes, this year. There's some that had some pretty deep runs um, in there. I'm kind of – yeah, he had a pretty good – yeah, real good run there. I know Evan Stanley had a real good run there. And if you look at who's all placed at IPO as middle schoolers, it's pretty uh, – it's a pretty short list, but it's also a pretty impressive list. Uh, Nick Lee, Jesse Mendez, um, and one of Nick Lee's uh, teammates. Uh, what's his name? Oh, shoot. Uh, uh, but, uh, one guy that's been there forever. Um, Bergie? No. Uh, bu- 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 Carson Manville? Yes, Manville. Mason Manville. Mason, Mason Manville. Yeah. So... There haven't been very many guys that placed as uh, in middle school at IPO, um, let alone you know. So that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So a guy like Landon Hawkins probably gonna come in one twenty, one twenty six, one thirty two in that mix, um, in a really good lineup. He was third at uh, IPO. He beat a two time champ in Kate and Cluse. I know talking to those guys, uh, I think you can at Tulsa you can wrestle if you're in high school. He beat two Oklahoma champs, the two A and three A champ. At Oklahoma, uh, Parker Reynolds, real highly ranked. He'll be at Brownsburg. Uh, Revan Dickman, uh, on, he'll be a 106 pounder. I mean, you're gonna have Brownsburg might be able to run out two guys that could be, you know, back to back 106 winners. Two guys maybe going for fours. If Hockaday, you know, is at that one. Obviously, if he comes back at 13, he's gonna be in the mix again. And then you'll have Dickman, who's gonna be a favorite guy to go number two ranked at at 80 pounds by Matt Scouts. Uh, Nate Rio, uh, real small, so I think 88 pounds. I think that's what he wrestled. Evan Stanley, uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does. I know uh, he, his dad's the coach at Lowell. Um, I've heard possibly Mount Carmel. <clears throat> Kyle Harden, real good, uh, bigger guy. I know he was a guy that we thought you know might be. I thought we <laughs> thought he was a freshman this year. Yeah, which happens. You see those guys a lot. Uh, Clinton Shepard, uh, West Central. I heard he might not go to West Central. So he'll be in the mix at 106. Jesse, uh, Jeffrey Hoovet, uh, Hoovet. He'll be at New Prairie. I know he's a big Midwest kid. Yeah, he wrestled. Uh, I, he was 5-2 and two at IPO, which is – he was right there to place at uh, – I think he was like 123 or something. So, yeah, I know he had a, a pretty good Super 32 in the middle school side. Uh, Rojas. Uh, he'll be at Mount, uh, Brownsburg too. Lane Horn, uh, Rochester, get another good one. Uh, Haynes, uh, Case Haynes Bell. From, uh, yeah, for, you skipped over Haynes from Brownsburg. Another Haynes in the in the lineup. Yeah, but I, I think what's going to be tough for those guys is a lot of those guys are the same size, you know? Yeah. It's going to be tough. Um, the little Thrine will be coming in. He had a real good match with uh, Vargo at um, Middle School State this year. A lot of points. Jackson Bradley. I believe he's a Cohen kid, right? Yeah, he'll be a he'll be at Cowan. Um, yeah, Cowan. he's pretty tough. He had what? Uh, he he did pretty well at Super Thirty Two, and he wrestled at IPO too. Um, pretty popular. Yeah. He did, and that's a that's a family that uh, has had a lot of success. Um, Gavin Lewis, uh, incoming freshman at Hobart, one hundred six. Uh, Case Bell's seventh grader, so I was, I was off on that one. Uh, Griffin Van Tetchel, um, real. Real good. He was eighth at Super 32. I know he uh, wrestled, um, I believe it was staying real tight at, at IPO. I think like 2-0. So he'll be at Crown Point. Uh, a bunch of real good seventh graders. Uh, Sonny Sessa coming in. He'll, he, I mean, it's going to be tough for him to make the lineup over there at Crown Point. He's kind of in that same range of like 120 through, I mean, 13 through stack through heavyweight. It's going to be hard for anyone to make the lineup over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you got a lot of real good guys coming in. I mean, you ask people that have been in there. Like you look at the rankings, and I, you know, I asked. Obviously, I asked Joe. Joe's, you know, that's Evan. Evan's his kid, so he's in the mix. So he knows those guys. Talk to Hawk. Little Bargo beat Demarco this summer. It just kind of tells you how tough he is. Um, I know that. Who's the other? One? I know Joe sent me another one. They said, uh, I think Shepard had a real good win this summer over like some of those guys. So it, it's. 
those guys are going to come in and make a splash. So as we're going over the pound for pound or these lists, you're going to have guys like Little Vargo. I think Vargo's a seventh grader too. Yeah. I believe. Is. Yeah. So, I mean, seventh grader has beaten guys with two state medals. It's pretty impressive. You know, uh, yeah, Shepard beat uh, Jalen May. Wow. That's pretty good. You know, as a, a guy, and I heard he might not wrestle and be a year or who knows. Like I said, it's hard to, to pin that down. Uh, you know, we talked about Landon. Landon had a, a really good uh, IPO. He placed ahead of a lot of good guys in Indiana. You know, guys like um, Evan Dickey was in that weight. He ended up being third. He beat a two-time champ from Michigan in that weight. Yeah, and he had a real close. You know, he lost a real close one, I think, on the front side. And and was probably a little bit, I mean, a little bit underweight, too. Um, let's see. Hawkins I think it would be interesting. Hermes Go ahead. beat Cluse. Um beat uh, uh, Jackson Roselli. His dad is the head coach at uh, Oklahoma. So, Roselli. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting, especially in this weekend, too. You're going to – or next weekend, you have ISWA, where you see some of these guys kind of hitting cadets. So you, you kind of want to see where they fall at, you know? Like, yeah. where are they, some of these guys going to be? I believe they said that Landon's going to be at 20 and Evan will be at 26. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see some of those guys knock off uh, – some high school guys that that are on these lists that we're we're producing right now before we get to here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's gonna be it'll be interesting. Um, you got guys like Dickman and Rio are both pretty small. I think Dickman's registered still at a hundred pounds. I don't know where Rio is. I mean, Rio placed at Fargo. I think he was a double O American at Fargo, if I'm not mistaken. And, but you know, but it's one of those things. He's gonna be coming in tiny, and just like his yeah. older brother. And they're both him and Dickman are older for their grade because they're going to be second year cadets or 16U as they still call it now, which is, which means they're going to be, they turn six, which means they turn 16 this year sometime, whether it's, they've already, they're already 16 or they'll, you know, whether it's December, whenever. Um, and you have guys, um, I think Hawkins is a cadet. I'm trying to think. There's some guys that you'll see. I think he's a first year. They said, because I was asking, I think if you're a second year, year cadet, you can bump to junior. <laughs> But if you're uh, first year, you can't. Only, you can bump to junior if you are in high school. Okay. So it, even if you're a first year cadet, and I mean, I, I was, I would have been a cadet. My two cadet years would have been my freshman sophomore year. Um, that's a little bit younger. I mean, it just depends on where your birthday falls, and you know, especially boys are sometimes held back earlier in their careers because they're not uh, as mature and they're crazy at as a four and a four to five year old. So the parents hold them back not even thinking about wrestling or any other kind of, uh, you know, they're looking more academics at that time. So, um, so yeah, it'd be interesting yeah. to see these guys. Yeah. Like Evan Stanley at IPO, uh, beat Schroeder from Troy Christian beat, uh, Anthony Isaac, who is a Colorado fifth placer. I think is originally a crown point kid lost to Preston Haynes tune zero. I mean, Preston Haynes is a point away from being a champ, a locked hands away from being an overtime, you know? Yeah. Um, Goes on the backside and goes uh, – beats Spalding, then loses the C twig. So – and I know he's been there twice, you know. Yeah. That was a – he was a round ahead of guys like Easton Doster there, uh, Roselli, Liam Kruger, uh, Evan Sang lost in the same round, Matt Inley, Cody Rollis. Um Evan Dickey, I think, was a round, maybe round deeper, the same round. So it just kind of tells you how tough that, those guys are, you know? Yeah. There's a lot of good guys coming and, up. I mean, this this fresh, this eighth grade class is going to be pretty tough. And that was at 16. That's not even at nine where like, some <laughs> of those guys are going to be, yeah. you know? Yeah. You you expect more uh, guys that are younger to be able to make a splash on those weights. Yeah. And you got a, you got a pretty good mixture of – you know, guys like they're bigger. Um, Harden's, you know, they're, I think they're projecting him to come in at 170. Rojas is probably a 60, 70 pounder. Uh, there's a couple other bigger guys in there that are going to make some, make an immediate impact. They're going to be kind of like, you know, a Gunner or a uh, VZ, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, they're be a little bit smaller than them, but they're still going to have that kind of impact, you know, state semifinalist capability. Oh, I I'm interested to see how they how Brownsburg maneuvers up top with um, Maximus Forrester, who was a middle school champ two years ago, uh, was injured this past year. 
I, I believe he won middle school state about two, 225, 230. Like if that's a guy that can slide in there at 220 with him and Gunner and Layton, like that's as good to close out a team as anybody, you know? Yeah. Yeah, he was. And a, I believe his, his, fit, his pin in the finals, I believe, was like 14 seconds his year, last year he won it. Yeah, he won. Yeah, he won at two seventy five. Um, obviously, there's a little bit. Let's see. Do they have his their weights in there? Yes, they do. He was he was two thirty six. Um, so obviously, no no clue where no clue where he uh, what he weighs now. He I, I know we saw him on the video for uh, Team State. Yeah, and I mean he doesn't. He could definitely make 220, which would, I mean, if he had been healthy there, he, he might have been able to help make a little bit of a difference for them this year. I don't know if he'd have qualified there, but he could have. Obviously. Yeah, lose, lose, especially losing street at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, Yeah, you'll have a guy like, uh, you know, Lucas Bow. I think he's a seventh grader also. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have the experience, and his brother's going to help him. Uh, Hoov, Hoovet. From uh, he'll be at New Prairie, be captor uh, there. Be Dominic McFeely was a state qualifier. Captor was a, a couple seconds away from being a state qualifier. Be, be Michael Araka, be Bryce Denton. So another guy that's real tough. That was at IPO. So I think that's always like one of the cool things. And you know some of these guys that are seventh graders that are, that won't be wrestling in uh, high school next year. Hi Varts, thanks Hi, Joe. <laughs> uh, you're going to have some of those guys that are going to be at IPO as eighth graders, you know, trying to make that splash. You're going to see those guys, you know, get in the mix. Yeah. It's pretty is, cool this year to see those guys that did come to IPO, like Hawkins, like uh, Stanley and uh, all those guys, Hyvert. Uh, I don't know. I think Shep, the Shepherd come, but a lot of those guys kind of came to IPO and, and wrestled and, you know, tested themselves. Obviously Landon Haynes was probably a little bit undersized at 109. Went out there. He went three and two. Things like that. That uh, you know, going there and testing yourself there it doesn't hurt you to wrestle those high school kids and kind of start making a little bit of a name for you for yourself. Looks like they had yeah, eight guys on the list: Stanley Hawkins, Reynolds was three and two. I mean, going I three and two was... or four and two at IPO is no joke. Shepard, Iver, uh, Landon Haynes, Sonny Sessa was three and two. So I mean, that's. Quentin's pretty Jeff impressive, you know. Twin multiple matches there, and they're they're high school state qualifiers. I know we Hector Landis was zero two, and he played state at state. You know, yeah. And I, I think, and I know that was like one of the things. Uh, I think Evan went as a seventh grader and drew uh, Jamarcus Smith, like right off the bat. Who's who was really? I think he was fourth this year, and I think it just kind of gets you on the map earlier. You know, yeah. I think that was like one of the things uh, Jesse went as an eighth grader, right? He beat Moran there. Yeah. Um, and obviously we talked about Nick Lee winning it there. Lee won as a seventh I, grader. And then, I mean, and that was when I was like the second year of the event. So it was still it was in the infancy. It still was some, a pretty solid weight class. Um, yeah. It, it, he, he beat Hayden Lee, then lost to Hayden Lee, right? Yeah. He lost but, to him the yeah. next year. Didn't Technically, they didn't place the second year since we only placed four. Someday we'll maybe what, play uh, six. <laughs> what if he ended up being an uh, uh, AIA champ? Yeah, yeah. Pretty good. And then and that weight class had, uh, I think I want to say that weight class had uh, Nathan Boston in there too. Pretty good. Pretty good weight class, but yeah. It's just, yeah. So hopefully we get more of those, those you know, seventh graders that are coming in. They're pretty tough. Yeah. Um, Hopefully we get some of those guys entering in. I'm gonna see what I think Boston wrestled in that one. Let's see. That was the abbreviated version. Uh, I talked to Joe for about 20 minutes through text the other day. Yes. About, like incoming freshmen and just kind of because I mean you got to kind of ask a couple different people uh, like what their thoughts are because someone's opinion might be different than other people's and um, you know they're not uh, the the seventh graders aren't re-registering as an eighth grader so it's you're not gonna get those guys in there but. The seventh grade class coming behind this eighth grade class is really talented too. Yeah. You have a guy like, uh, I know we talked about it, um, me and him. He's a bigger guy, Vinny Freeman, uh, the Notre Dame coach's son. I think he ended up pinning his way through the finals at like 160. He'll, uh, he'll be at Penn and he'll be in, a, in a, an incredibly tough area with Holly Field and, uh, and uh, Steinbeck. So you'll have good partners in there. Yeah. So yeah, it's 
definitely a lot of good young guys coming in um, this year. So it's going to be kind of fun. It's going to be fun to watch, and hopefully we get to see a little bit of a we'll get to see a little bit of a preview this coming week or next weekend at uh, Folk Style State, and then you know obviously Freestyle Greco State that kind of stuff, and you know going from there. Yeah, I think uh, and especially you know Folk Style State. I don't know how many cadets are going to hit in there. Um, you know, especially 120, 126, but you could get, I mean, I don't know what, uh, you know, Kyra Lavelle, maybe, maybe Kyra Lavelle, Evan Stanley, you get kind of a preview of that, yeah. you know, maybe by right in the mix, maybe you get Haynes and, uh, I mean, unless Haynes is a junior, he might be a junior. I think I asked that. Maybe Haynes and, um, you know, Hawkins, if he's at 120, but I think they said Haynes is a junior. Haynes in juniors, not a junior. Yeah, junior age group. Yeah. So, and we're starting to get more people registering. Obviously, people wait till the last second to uh, register. Uh, I'm the junior too, and then the juniors. So I mean, that's that's the the hard part is you kind of want to see. I think is Demarco in juniors also? Is he a cadet? Maybe Demarco Stanley then. Yeah, I do not know. There's some good. I was looking at some of the weight classes. Um, Mikey Robles from uh, Mishawaka. I know we talked about him earlier in the year. Uh, he's Russell, he's registered at 145 with some pretty solid guys. Um, yeah, I think um, you know a pretty interesting story. Maybe we'll do an article with him next year. Um, I'm happy to see him on the mat. I know he's a nice kid. I think he, he's dealt with some adversity. Yeah. So you got uh, Dickman's at one 100, um, and obviously there's not even there's like 300 and some registered, and there'll be close to 2,000. Um, Let's see. Evan Stanley's at 26. Uh, William May from Ron Colley. Uh, let's see. Anyone else? Of You got Flores from Center Grove. Um, let's see. Really not anyone else. Dylan Bennett. is at, He's a junior. He's at 113. So, yeah. So, there's still a lot of people to be registered. And, obviously, they register for classes. Especially at this time of year, they, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to make my high school weight class. I wasn't that hard, but then they decide to go out to eat the night before and say, screw it. <laughs> so we'll see some different, uh, different weight classes then are what are registered and some guys. He'll probably be higher though. Crazy. Maybe I'll get like a Griffin Van Tetchel. I think he's up in there. Maybe Quentin Buckmaster, another guy, a KV guy, maybe. I, I yet to put that maybe on there. You never know. We get those like texts in the summer. Yeah. But I mean, that's another guy, uh, real tough. I know he beat uh, Van Tetchel. Um, he's just a pretty good softball player, also. But yeah, a high vert. So you, you'll have Crazy in there with those guys, and I mean, those guys will be able to see where they're at and just kind of get an idea. I mean, th all that stuff. I mean, a lot of people ask about rankings, especially freshman rankings. Um, ISWA stuff we look at. I, I mean, it, I'd tell you, like, I'd be lying if I told you I go and look at every single, you know, dual result from all these, like, crazy Rocky Smoky Mountain duels, the yeah. Deep River duel, the Spartan, the Bloody Spartan duel, the Chasing the Killer duels. <laughs> like, like if you send me the results, I'll, like, note it. But, like, I, I don't go through that. Um, I don't go through all that whole duel scene. But, the you know, ISWA stuff we track, uh, obviously. Um, IPO is huge. That kind of gives us an idea where you're going to be. Sometimes they trick you, though. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see a guy up at, like, 60, and then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, I'm going to wrestle 25, <laughs> um, which happens. It's happened to us before. Yes. Um, but you, you want to see, like, th those matches. But those are the times where you're going to see, like, that's how a guy like Jake Hockaday finds a number one ranking. You know, Chad Red going to Super 32 and placing ahead of Hayden Lee, Yeah. you know, was how Chad – there's only been what three guys that have been ranked one out the gate, right? Yeah. Was Chad? Which, was Hock, uh, did we have Hockaday? Yeah, Hockaday. And then who was the? And then Jesse. Yeah. Those. Did was, have, Jesse was one. He had a better showing right before, right? Than Watts. Because he would have been. Mate, look back. Yeah. Not the um, not my book. <laughs> there's not a lot of like freshmen that come in. But, like, a guy like, you know, Evan Stanley is going to have opportunities because he's in a spot where those guys do wrestle a lot, Yeah, you know? And, and he's like, going to be in that spot where he is also a – they're all the same age group, which helps. I mean, like, if uh, like someone like VZ 
or uh, you know, you know, say like Vizier or um, or Gunner Henry, they were both bigger guys and they were dominating at the cadet well, level. But well, a guy like Vizier did have an opportunity, right? Like he yeah. could have been at he could have wrestled Buchanan at uh, at yeah, IPO. Yeah, I think he chose to do like a Supreme Killer duels, or I don't, and that wasn't even Supreme Killer duels, different duels. Yeah, I think he was at duels another spot. Like you have an opportunity, and and it didn't hurt him. Obviously, he was still fourth, but um, when those guys are like, "Well, he should be ranked one," like, well, he had an opportunity to wrestle the number one ranked guy. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, in your backyard where you could have slept in your own bed. That guy had to stay at a hotel. He had to stay at a Holiday Inn. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where these guys all fall. Um, some, you know, some of those bigger guys don't get an opportunity to get to those areas to wrestle those big, you know, the top guys. And if you do have, if you do. Have, have an opportunity to take advantage of it. I mean, it'll boost your rankings, boost your, heck, yeah. it's always good to get, get your hands on someone, uh, you know, one time, even if it's off season, even if it's a two on one match and, you know, well, see, see what it feels like. I mean, like Hiver wrestled Justin Gates for too. That's, that's huge. You know, you're looking at things like that. You're looking at like, uh, you know, some of the best guys in the country. We, we talked about it. Um, when Penn State and Iowa dueled, a lot of those guys were wrestling at IPO. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, there's a lot I of think guys. You said that, right? Yeah. It's pretty neat to see those those events and you're seeing uh guys that are wrestling that have wrestled at IPO um throughout the years. You know, you look you're gonna go look at the Big Tens this coming weekend and you'll see a lot of guys with that. Um you know, they've wrestled at IPO and it's pretty neat to kinda, you know see that yeah. as a uh as someone that, you know, we're still trying to grow the event and keep, you know, bringing in a lot of great guys, and it's neat to see that. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Um, as far as the schedule coming up, I don't know what we'll be doing. I kind of would like to have some more guests on. I kind of have some ideas. Might take a couple weeks off. I don't know. Um, Get caught up in life. Life, yes. life you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I got Rocco has a couple. He he wrestled last weekend. I got second at the uh, West Noble uh, Tournament of Champions. Um, nice. <laughs> so it was pretty and fun. And the journey begins. What did you say? And the journey begins. Yes, it was a. Uh, I can tell as a parent, I've never, even though it, these are, I've coached thousands and thousands of matches, and this is these were probably three of the most had nothing to do with anything in life. You know, these, these weren't ticket round matches. These weren't under the lights matches. These weren't semifinals matches in overtime. And I was probably more nervous for these matches than any other match. <laughs> this uh, coach dad thing was quite interesting to say the least. And so hopefully we got another one coming up this weekend. We're heading up to Lakeland. So uh be kind of fun to, you know, fun to get in that journey, walked into the building and you've seen all the parents, all the, you know, like, oh my goodness, am I really doing this? Am I really bringing my kid to this? But it was a well-run event, and we got out of there by noon, and we got three matches. He got a medal, and he was excited. So at, at this point, at five years old, we'll, we'll take that. <laughs> so it's uh, it was quite a, quite an adventure. So, um, yeah, we're going to probably take a couple weeks off. I know I have some ideas, and I've been talking to people about possibly bringing them on and letting Mike be a coach softball and do all that fun stuff. I know we got NCAs coming up. Maybe I'll try to lure Drew Hughes in. I know he's still probably, he, he did a pretty good job with NCA type stuff. And I know he's still keeping tabs on that. So we did a good job last year. So I don't know what's going on. So might be the last one for a couple of weeks. We'll see what goes on here. So anyway. Unless something crazy happens at ISWA, then we'll jump back on. Yeah. And maybe, maybe we'll do week after ISWA state and give a little bit of a, we can go a little bit shorter. We don't have to go two hours. <laughs> so go a little bit shorter. It's not really, our, it's not really our scene, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can't, I mean, these were, we're already at two hours already tonight and we weren't really that uh, into it. <laughs> I mean, we weren't, there wasn't much, any really results to go over. So, um, so any other words of wisdom before we head off here? No, I think that was it, man. I think, uh, I think all that was pretty cool. I think uh, the season's always been great. You know, it's sad to see it, you know, kind of winding down, but not winding down for everybody. You know, we had two this past weekend, and then we'll have ISWA coming up, and those guys are just always grinding, man. So, yeah, it's going to be, you know, good good few weeks of wrestling coming up, and um, should be a lot of 
should be a lot of fun to uh, to watch and keep tabs on. Hopefully, I can maybe make it down to SWA State. I don't know, at least for one day. So we'll see how that. Uh, yeah, you got bragging rights. You got Indiana versus Illinois, Pittsburgh. You got lots, lots of stuff going on, which is kind of cool. And it's nice to be back a little bit more to normal with events going on, even local events and things like that. So it's it's fun. It's nice to have events. So with that, we're gonna get off here, and we will. Be back sometime soon. I don't know when, but we'll be back. <laughs>